Welcome to three hours of Am I the Jerk stories. Sit back, relax, let's go. Would I be the jerk for spraying some kid with my garden hose daily after he walks all over our lawn? I am a 37 year old man and I live with my wife and son and daughter who are nine and 11 respectively. Recently, there's been this kid who comes by our house after playing soccer and either rides his bike or walks over the lawn with his cleats on his way home. It started out as me giving him stern looks whenever I saw him. Then it slowly progressed to me asking him to just go around. The last time I asked him to stop, he made a point to stomp extra hard and twist his feet into the grass to annoy me. Since then, I've just been hosing him. The first time I sprayed him with the hose, he ran off. But then for some reason, he just started standing there while I hose him like he enjoys it. It's now progressed to me sitting on my lawn chair, pointing my hose at him and him just staring at me while he does so. Sometimes we even make small talk. I'm not gonna lie. It started off as a really bitter relationship, but I've actually gotten to know the kid quite well. We talk for maybe 15 to 20 minutes every day and he doesn't seem to mind being hosed down after sweating hard playing soccer. He comes by daily and we just shoot the poop while I hose him and he stands there for a bit. My wife told me that I need to stop even after I explain it to her. She said I'm making us look like childish idiots. I guess I could stop, but honestly, it's really funny waiting for him to come by and I see no harm in it. So, would I be the jerk? Not at all, OP. If you're both enjoying it, I see nothing wrong with it. Ultimately, the kid's getting cleaned anyway, and you're having a good time, and so is he. I'm all for it. Good stuff. Am I the jerk for going off on my wife for commenting about our three-week-old daughter's looks? My daughter, our second child, is three weeks old. Pre-pregnancy, my wife was diagnosed with general anxiety disorder and depression. And in the days since birthing our baby girl is most definitely experiencing postpartum depression Our first child our son looks very much so like her In fact, you look at baby photos of my wife They look almost exactly like our son's baby photos and my wife is a looker So my son is dang cute. Thank you very much Our daughter got a bit more of my size gene pool her hairline kind of has a widow's peak Which i've had since I was a baby her lips are relatively thin like me Her nose is a little larger than our son's was. I have a Middle Eastern classic hook nose. Nearly every day in my daughter's 21 days on this earth, my wife has made a comment to baby girl about how she's so sad she got daddy's features. Just some of the things my wife has said to our baby girl are, don't worry, I'll get you a nose job as soon as you're old enough. I wish you'd gotten more of my features. My family is beautiful and all the women are timeless. Your dad's family, not so much. Your brother has the beautiful pouty lips and you got stuck with those pencil lips. Oh, it's really tough being a girl. Up until yesterday, I was taking a softer approach with comments like, okay, be nice and okay, chillax. But today I had enough and I just snapped and I yelled at her for like five minutes straight and I cursed quite a bit too. The gist of my statements were, I don't care if she can't yet understand what you're saying, stop putting that trash out into the universe. Our son can understand you, so stop this garbage. I can understand you, so stop putting this trash in my head and making me listen to it. Yeah, life on girls is tough in this world, especially when their mum is trashing all over their appearance. She's freaking three weeks old and is still perfect and noble and hasn't hurt a god dang soul. Stop projecting onto her. And finally, you regularly tell me how your mum screwed up your psyche with all her comments about your appearance. So why the heck are you doing the same to our baby girl? Anyways, she was understandably hurt by my comments and we haven't really talked about it or debriefed since. I do recognize that part of her comments stem from her anxiety and depression as well as her postpartum depression. And I also recognize there are a lot of this that stems from her mum's influence on her psyche. Also, I know that yelling and berating people is rarely the right thing. So am I the jerk here? Okay, first things first, OP, you're definitely not the jerk here. I mean, that's not even up for debate. You have to call her out on this. This is ridiculous. However, what I think is more important is less the question of whether you're in the right or the wrong for how you responded. It's more why this woman is doing this to her own daughter. That's what I think is more compelling like she must know herself right because as you mentioned here the fact of the matter is that her mum did the same thing to her and she doesn't like it and she knows the effect that it's had on her so then why is she doing that onto her own daughter i don't think if she was switched on logically she would do that knowing how it affected her so maybe there's some underlying thing going on here as you said you recognize that a lot of this stems from her mum's influence so i think instead of you know shouting at her 
and going off on her. Maybe the thing to do, I mean, look, I'm not saying you did the wrong thing here because I would have done the same, but going down the line, maybe the thing to do is have a conversation with her and try and work out what's really going on here and explain clearly why this is such a bad thing to be doing at such an early age in someone's life and also how it affects everyone else around you in the family am i the jerk for lighting a match at night and scaring my boyfriend's dad so badly he woke up the whole house my boyfriend and i are staying at his parents house it's been going really well but his dad is very particular he has moments every day where he corrects or instructs the other people in the house on how he wants us to behave now, I don't really have a problem with it, but he has a few rules that do make me a little uncomfortable. I don't need to get into why, but I always get diarrhea here. I've been visiting them a few times a year for almost a decade, and it just is what it is. My boyfriend and I used to stay in a room downstairs with a bathroom, and it wasn't a problem. But his brother moved back home, and now we don't have our own bathroom. I don't want to advertise the fact that I have diarrhea to everyone in the house, and I'm not allowed to use the bathroom fan at night, so I usually use poo pourri or just a drop. When we got home the last time, my boyfriend got a text from his dad asking him to ask me to stop using strong essential oils as it was making him feel sick. I was so embarrassed and I honestly have been kind of dreading coming here again. I was talking to my mum about this and she suggested that I bring some paper matches because that's what she used to do. I got some paper matches and they actually work pretty well. Tonight, I woke up from my sleep because I had diarrhea. I lit a match when I was done, ran it underwater and folded it up into some aluminium before throwing it in the garbage. I fell back asleep and was woken up a while later by a big commotion. My boyfriend's dad smelled burning and thought the house was on fire. So he woke everyone up in a panic and searched the house to see what was burning. I didn't immediately equate a match with a house fire and I didn't smell anything when I woke up. So I didn't bring up that I'd lit a match. It wasn't even clicking for me that the match was what he smelled until my boyfriend asked me if I smelled anything when I got up earlier to use the bathroom. Long story short, I just got chewed out by his dad for lighting matches at night or lighting matches in general as a guest in their home. And even his mum was upset because I could have started a fire and nobody would know. I apologized and everyone went back to bed. But then my boyfriend lectured me for like 50 minutes about embarrassing him and playing dumb, about not knowing what his dad smelled and not using common sense. And then he told me to go to sleep and try not to wake everyone up again. I'm honestly fuming. My boyfriend is sleeping soundly and I'm just lying here getting madder and madder. I want to wake him up so we can leave because I feel so uncomfortable. I really don't want to face everyone in the morning. I don't feel like I did anything wrong, but I don't know if I'm thinking rationally because I'm tired and I can't fall back asleep. So what do you think? Am I the jerk? Now guys, I'll tell you what's scary. Lighting a match well, just sends shivers down my spine. What an absolute load of rubbish. One of the most ridiculous stories I've ever read. This family just sounds a little bit weird and controlling and it kind of sounds like you've walked into a cult here. I'm not even joking. I'm getting cult vibes. Like they're locking you into things that you can and can't do. You can't have the bathroom fan on at night even for a couple of seconds. Seriously? It's a bit ridiculous. What, you'd rather the rooms just stink? It's, it's a horrible thing, isn't it? Because it's going to make OP feel extremely insecure and, as you said, uncomfortable in your boyfriend's home. And the fact that your boyfriend is sticking up, not for you, but for his family and his dad? Absolutely ridiculous, given that he knows exactly what you're going through and the reasons why you had to light the match in the first place. You're trying your hardest. He's saying, just go to sleep. Jerk. Am I the jerk for interrupting my son's dates so he could pick up his little sister? I am a single father to two children, Max, a 17-year-old boy, and Lisa, an 8-year-old girl. I usually have Lisa in after-school clubs so that I'm able to pick her up after work. However, yesterday evening, I was given some work that had me working overtime. I did try my best to negotiate out of it, but my manager told me that the assignment was to be completed by that night, so I just did. It was nearing towards 6 p.m. and I just knew I wouldn't be able to make it to Lisa. So I called Max and asked him to pick her up. He responded by saying that he couldn't because he was on a date with his girlfriend for their sixth month anniversary. I told him that I understood, but that I really needed him to get Lisa and that I'd make it up to him for interrupting. He just angrily turned off the phone and I thought that while he was mad, he just decided to pick her up. But 30 minutes later, I receive a call from Lisa's school as to where I was, as the school was close to closing down and nobody was there. 
Luckily, one of Lisa's friend's mothers said they'd drop her off and that was all good. However, I don't really like it when Lisa goes with that particular friend. Not because of the friend, but because of the mother. She has this habit of asking maths questions in the car that she knows Lisa is unable to answer and then she criticizes her over it. It's all just very mean. I called Max and asked him where he was and that he was in big trouble when he got home. He just told me that he was busy and to leave him the hell alone. He came home at around 9 p.m. I told him he was grounded and that he was not allowed to use the car for a good three weeks. At that, he got all mad and said that it wasn't his fault. I was failing as a parent and unable to afford someone to collect Lisa. I just want some insight on this situation. Was I being too harsh? And am I the jerk for interrupting his dates? Now, this is an interesting one because from my point of view, if I put myself in your son Max's position, there is nothing I can think of that is worse than my date with my girlfriend being interrupted by my dad. Fair enough, from Max's perspective, that is just not something that you want to have happen. And I completely understand that. However, from your point of view, the stuff that he is saying to you is absolutely mental. I'm sorry, it is. The fact that he's saying you failed as a parent because you're unable to afford to collect your daughter is crazy. And for that alone, like, yeah, I'm sorry, you're right. He has to be grounded. Simple as that. Less so the fact that he didn't pick your daughter up when you asked, more because of this complete disrespect. I'm going to be honest, he really should have gone and picked her up. Like, that is the least he could do. But I I wouldn't hold a grudge against him if he was really angry in doing so. And like you said, you thought he just turned the phone off and went and did it and was angry, and that was okay. However, that, and then on top of that, the stuff he said to you, no, you're definitely not the jerk. It's just it's just a tough situation for him, but you can't react like that. That is absolutely disgraceful. Now, interestingly, OP has actually added some more info. Max and Lisa's mother. By the way, I know it's probably Liza, but I called her Lisa off the rip, so I'm going to stick with Lisa. Max and Lisa's mother is not present in their lives. And no, he doesn't like socializing with parents at Lisa's school. Fair enough. He works a lot of the time hasn't found time outside of the yearly parent meetings. Completely fair enough. And then also he says, OP this is, that this is the third time that he's asked Max to pick up his sister in the span of a year and a half. So it's not a regular thing. And again, some people are asking why they don't have a nanny. Money is tight. Fair enough. You're doing all you can. It's not as if you're like, you know, slinking off and doing what you want to do. You're working hard. Your boss has got you locked in at work. It's a tough one. It really is. And I do feel for Max a little bit. But once again, you can't be saying those sort of things to your father. Am I the jerk for giving my mum the wrong start time for my birthday lunch so she'd be on time? I am a 22-year-old woman. And my mum, who's in her mid-40s, is one of those people who is always late to everything. I'm talking family get-togethers, birthdays, graduations, weddings, you name it, she's showing up late. At first, growing up, I just thought it was because she's bad with time, but as I've gotten older, I genuinely believe she likes making an entrance. I personally find it, one, rude, and two, embarrassing, as it's not like it happens once in a while, it literally happens at every single function she's invited to that has a set time. Many family members have complained about this, but nothing ever changes. It's gone to the point that whenever my grandma has family lunches or dinners, she'll tell my mum it starts an hour earlier than it actually does, so she'll be there on time. My mum doesn't know that my grandma does this. It's a joke between my grandma and me. This past weekend was my 22nd birthday. My grandma wanted to do a lunch for me at her place with our immediate family. The lunch was to start at 2 p.m., but we told my mum 1 p.m. I had plans later that evening to go out for dinner with my boyfriend, so I wanted to leave my grandma's house at around 5 at the absolute latest because I needed to go home and get all ready. Well, of course, my mum was late. We called her at about 2.30 p.m. to see where she was because, you know, it's her daughter's birthday. She just left her house at 2.30 p.m. and still had to pick up her boyfriend on her way to my grandma's, which is 30 to 35 minutes away. So none of us were expecting her to arrive until about half past three. She finally arrives two and a half hours late from the time we told her and makes her little entrance. We question her about it. She tells us she thought the lunch started at two. We asked her where she heard this from and she said my aunt, who was present at the lunch, told her. We questioned my aunt and she said that she felt bad lying to my mum. Everyone is pretty annoyed, but we all move on. Fast forward an hour later at half past four and I have to start leaving. My mum starts getting all annoyed with me that I'm leaving so soon and that she barely got to see me for my birthday. I told her that my life doesn't revolve around her and that she should have been there sooner. She started giving me attitude and listing all these excuses as to why she's late. 
I couldn't be bothered to hear them and I left later that night She messaged me saying that I was acting like a jerk towards her and it was rude of me to lie to her about the time the lunch started My mum and my aunt think i'm the jerk for lying to her My grandma doesn't think it's a big deal and that they're overreacting I came here for some outside opinions now the reason I picked this story out in the first place is because it's very pertinent to me or at least I thought it was going to be I am someone that massively struggles with time issues time management it's something that i've tried to work on i'm still just naturally very bad at it call it laziness call it lack of you know whatever you want i don't care but the truth is i do struggle with it however when there is a set time for something to start like an event or you know you go to the the cinema or the theater or something and you know that it starts at this certain time or someone's birthday officially starts at a certain time i'm not gonna go late then and make an entrance like who does that sorry that's just strange like yeah look i hold my hands up sometimes i do happen to be a little bit late but i'm not choosing to do that nor am I coming in making a big entrance. I'm coming in sheepishly and saying, yeah, sorry, I'm late. Um, but I'm here now, you know, that's it. I'm not doing this. This is ridiculous. And also the fact that she's then saying to you on your birthday, oh, why have we only seen you for just a couple of hours? I want to see you for longer. No, everyone else saw you for quite a few hours. You know, a good birthday celebration. You came late and that is why you clown. Once again, for the fourth time this video so far, no. You're not the jerk. I tell you what, we're on a good little streak here. Am I the jerk for becoming that parent by causing a stink at my daughter's school? My daughter, Cleo, who is 11, is very active outside of school. She plays soccer, takes swim lessons, and will play outside a lot with neighborhood kids. She's very social. Most of her friends are from outside of school. At school, however, she struggles making friends. Cleo has ADHD and was bullied in third and fourth grade for some of that. While it was brought under control by the fifth, her current grade, these kids still don't play with her and pretty much ice her out. While I don't think that they have to play with her, it also means that she doesn't socialize a lot at school. She's okay with this. Her teacher says our daughter often plays alone at recess or reads. My wife and I were not very concerned and explained she's very social and active afterwards. Cleo is a huge reader. She's currently reading her way through my wife's collection of books from her childhood. She loves them and treasures them knowing they were her mamas and wants to take great care of them She came home on tuesday very upset and worried her mum would be upset with her I asked why and she said her teacher took her book away and won't give it back until tomorrow When pressed for more information, she said she was reading at recess Her teacher walked over took the book and told her to go play My daughter begged for her book back and the teacher refused i quickly assured cleo that she wasn't in any trouble and even called my wife at work to have her back me up it was quite concerning that she was so afraid as my wife isn't one to fly off the handle she's always gentle with cleo as suspected my wife assured her she wasn't upset and that cleo did zero wrong the next day i brought cleo to school early and walked her to class no one but the teacher was there i told the teacher to give me the book she obliged and tried to defend herself I told her to save it and she had no right. There is no rule that Cleo has to do physical activity at recess and we expressed no concern. The teacher said that she was allowed to set boundaries for her class, but I pointed out that recess was free time. It's not like Cleo is reading during math. We went back and forth and finally I said I'd be reaching out to the principal. The issue was resolved quickly. I don't know the particulars, except the principal told me that Cleo is allowed to read at recess and unless she is actively harming someone or reading during a non-designated time, she wouldn't have any more books confiscated. My wife and I were pleased. Cleo even more so. My cousin is a teacher at this school, just a different grade. And she says what I did is hot gossip in the teacher's lounge and that I've been marked as one of those parents. She says the teacher isn't paid enough and I should have just accepted the rule. When I pointed out we only have two more months left at this school, Cleo is our only and starts junior high in August, that's not a concern. My wife and I feel justified, but we're wondering if I'm a jerk. See, I think this is actually incredibly harsh that you've been labeled as one of those parents in the staff room because we all know what one of those parents means, right? It's someone that's just pretty much a Karen, right? Someone that just complains about every little thing, thinks their child is above other children, is just an absolute angel, whatever. And you no, know, they always say like, no, you need to be doing this with my child, do this with my child, give special treatment, etc., etc. We all know what that means. Now, this is the complete opposite of that. You're complaining because your child has not been allowed to read a book in their free time, something that is educational anyway. That is extremely 
strange, first of all. And second of all, yes, absolutely you should be allowed to complain about this. And the fact of the matter is that the issue was resolved and the principal got involved and took your side, right? They don't have to do that just because you're a parent. They could have easily said, listen, I'm sorry that you feel that way, but this is how we run the school. If you were saying something ridiculous, but the fact of the matter is they know that what you're saying is right and therefore it's been changed. I don't know how you've now become one of those parents. That's ridiculous. And, and just to make it completely clear, no, of course, you are not the jerk. I also have no idea how a teacher's pay has anything to do with her overstepping boundaries. I don't care how much money you get or how little money you get. Don't tell someone on recess to not read a book. Strange behavior. All right, let's see if we can make it through this entire episode without actually coming across a jerk. Maybe for the first time ever. Am I the jerk for asking for more money for my car? So I, a 28 year old man, offered to sell my RAV4 that has 100,000 miles on it in January to my brother and his wife. They have a baby and a beat up Honda Civic as well as a Scion with way too many miles on it. They shared they'd be car hunting this year. I offered to sell it to them for what Carvana offered, which was $14,500. And they agreed to it right away. The problem is that my wife and I still haven't picked out our replacement car. So they check in every week or so, but we weren't ready. In the end, we decided to hold on to the car until our trip to Disney this past week. I checked Carvana again and they'd offered me more. This time, $16,500. I texted my brother telling him that he could have it, but he would need to match Carvana's new offer. He responded saying that they're not haggling and they've been put off buying a car for months as they thought we had an agreement and they were just waiting on us. They called me a jerk for stringing them along for three months and then asking for $2,000 more. I'm just trying to do what is right by my two kids and one on the way. So, am I in the wrong? Well, it was all going so well and now it's all fallen off a cliff. That is a real shame. I thought for the first time ever we might have a clean sweep. But alas, this is r slash am I the jerk. And we were bound to find one eventually. And, and I'm sorry to say, here we did. And this one isn't really up for debate. It's pretty clear. Maybe I get it. Like you're a bit annoyed that the price has changed and you would have made more money. But the fact is, you literally have said to somebody, you can have it for this price. And it's your brother as well. I mean, come on. You can't then change your mind and go back on that. And I agree. You have been stringing them along for a few months. That's on you. I think off the rip, you should have just done it quickly or at least set a date for this transaction to actually take place and for you to transfer over the keys because this was just a mess right from the off and the fact that you're charging your own brother and his family that you know need this car very much more money than you did at first yeah it's very ludicrous and i'm, I'm sorry to say that we have ended today's episode with a jerk unless you disagree of course guys i mean maybe you disagree on the, on the previous five stories but for me it was all going so well five ops in the right and then bang hit by this absolute idiot. A little bit strong, but I think that's kind of fair. Am I the jerk for stealing my cat? So I, a 21 year old woman, have a beautiful brown cat, Mitch. She's still a baby and is 10 months old. I found her outside of my work when she was about two to three months old and I immediately fell in love with her. We've had the best time together and her being my first pet since moving out makes me even happier. My cousin, Tanya, who is 15, visits me a lot since we live in the same city and I enjoy having her. She also really likes cats, but since her father is allergic, they don't have any at home. She really loves coming over to see Midge and I'm glad to be able to provide her with Midge's presence. School recently started, and before I go back to full-time student, I've been having to work almost 45 hours a week to afford my lifestyle for the next couple of months. Since I was busy, I let her have the responsibility of taking care of Mitch, such as feeding her, cleaning her litter box, etc. It was going really well. Now, one time, I didn't have the chance to take Tanya home since I was going to be at work, so I gave her my spare key to lock up, and I scheduled an Uber to take her to her house. When I came home eight hours later, Midge was gone. I called Tanya and she swore that Midge was home when she left. But after a couple of hours, my brother called asking when I gave Midge to Tanya. I was confused and he sent me a screenshot of Tanya kissing Midge on her Instagram story. I knew then that she'd blocked me from being able to see her and was shocked that she would do this to me. 
as well as lie to me. I had a spare key to their house and I went right over and took Midge back when they weren't home. When I got home, Tanya called screaming at me over the phone, telling me I broke into their house and stole her property. I laughed and I asked how Midge was hers. She told me since she took care of her, she deserved her since I wasn't home and she had to save Midge. Her parents were also pretty upset since I did go into their home without permission and they told me that I didn't deserve Midge from what Tanya told them. They told me they decided my uncle is going to take allergy medication and so that Midge can stay there and I need to give her back. Of course, I said no. Tanya ended up calling my mum, lying to her that I abused Midge. My mum called angry, asking me how I could do this to Midge and if I don't give her to Tanya and her family, she will disown me? Tanya texted me this weekend, saying that if I apologise, she might forgive me. Her parents have been texting me all weekend that they're going to press charges since I did go into their home and they're going to take Midge. I just don't know what to do. I love Midge so much and my mum gave my aunt and uncle permission to go to my apartment and take her. I know this because Tanya texted me this. I'm assuming to scare me. And I am scared. I'm so scared that one of these days I'm going to come home and Midge is going to be gone again. My brother and dad think I'm a jerk since I did go into their home without permission and I acted out without trying to solve it maturely. So am I the jerk for stealing my own cats? Now guys, good news. There is actually an update to this r slash am I the jerk post. But first of all, I want to give my opinion and there is no way that you're in the wrong here. Now, funnily enough, I have a story myself, which is quite comparable. My dad back in the day had his bike stolen, right? A tough thing. Not as bad as a cat, of course, but a tough story nonetheless. However, he was walking about in the local streets of wherever he lived and he saw it in the front garden of a house. It was unmistakably his. So what did he do? Well, he jumped the fence, got the bike and left. Now, is that stealing is my question. It's his own bike that was stolen from him and he then technically stole it back from someone else's property. Is that illegal? I don't think it is. And let's bring it back to this example. If you're stealing an animal, stealing an animal that is yours, then it's not stealing, is it? It was stolen from you. You're just getting it back. One, it's not stealing. And two, it's definitely not immoral. In fact, it's the right thing to do. You're just rehousing your pets. Actually, before we jump into the update, which was posted just a few days later, first of all, some edits. OP has said they called and left a voicemail to their landlord, giving a brief explanation of the situation. OP is upset since they asked for him to change the locks, but the landlord refused. Legally, he was able to since as a college student, OP's mum's name is on the lease and he needed her permission. Of course, he called and she refused. I've got to say, OP's parents' role in this is very interesting. The fact that they're believing OP's cousin rather than their daughter is a little bit weird, but hey, nonetheless, OP has said that she is scared that Tanya is going to come tomorrow and take the cat pack, but OP does have a friend who can take Midge for the day before work. Okay, interesting stuff. Next edit is that OP has said that they've set up an appointment for Midge to get microchipped this Saturday on their day off. Well, that seems like a great idea to me. They've also ordered a small security camera that covers the whole living room and front door. They're still requesting their landlord to change the locks, but he still has his foot down. And OP cannot move out since where she lives, it is pretty hard to get a place and basically everything requires credits, which OP does not have. Oh, now, how about this? This is an interesting turn of events. OP says, The only negative side is that Tanya has been posting pictures of Midge on Instagram claiming that I stole her and have received lots of messages from her friends and classmates from school trying to cancel and dox me. Now, that I don't really care about. Now, Tanya's parents have called me, giving me a second chance to reconsider before they press charges, which I highly doubt they would actually do. In regards to my mum, we're not talking, and I don't want to go no contact with her since I love my mum very much. I'm sure after all of this resolves, we're going to have a mature conversation about how she acted and what was wrong. Now, here we go. Let's get into the updates. I took a lot of people's advice and I got Midge microchip yesterday. As well, I had a conversation with my mum that we resolved together. My landlord still refuses to change my locks. But despite all of this, today, this morning, Midge was taken. I called my aunt and uncle and they just laughed and told me, try, we can hire a good lawyer. I called the police and I explained the situation, showing proof I had ownership of Midge. When we went to my relative's house, police asked for her back, but of course, they refused. What made me even angrier was that my cousin was inside the house, door open, 
holding Midge with a poop-eating grin. That is awful. Even though I had all this evidence, my relatives slammed the door demanding a warrant. The police suggested I press charges and take it to small claims court, which I am doing, but they couldn't do anything right there. Going home without Midge was so upsetting. I had to pull over because I started crying. I contacted an attorney and my cousin keeps posting photos of Midge on her Instagram. I took the situation to the family group chat in anger and good news at least, everyone hates them now. My grandmother wrote my uncle and his family off the will. And of course, they're calling me, threatening me with Midge and they make sure that I go to jail for all of this. Now, I'm fairly confident in myself, but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't concerned about Midge. I just want my baby back and i've been crying all day screw you tanya but guys the story doesn't end there five weeks later we got this final update hi everyone i'll be honest i forgot about this post for a bit after everything i just want to also say thank you to those specific people you know who you are who reached out to me across reddit to help with finances as attorneys are expensive and i'm only a student how amazing is that by the way that is the power of the internet But yes, I just want to say Midge is home. Small claims court came around and my attorney was very confident and helped me out so much. She was very helpful and knew from the start that we would win. I provided the judge everything. Yes, everything you guys commented as proof that I own her. Photos of her as a baby, proof I've paid for all the vet bills since she was a baby, and proof that I had Midge chipped. My landlord also helped. Although a lot of people were upset with him and telling me to move out, he was remorseful that his decision had consequences. I've forgiven him as his apology came with security footage of my aunt and uncle going into my apartment and taking Midge. Well, that could have been the most important piece of evidence of them all. We've been no contact since the case, and they've been silent, most likely embarrassed. To end this on a good note, I wish I could have taken a picture of Tanya's face when she handed Midge back to me. And there we go. I'm absolutely delighted for you, OP, that that story has a happy ending. Now, look, I have never really owned a pet that, let's just say, now I don't want to sound harsh. I don't want to sound harsh on my previous pets and Marty, my current snake. But look, there's a difference, isn't there, between having a snake as a pet and having a dog or a cat as a pet. A snake just, I'll be honest, kind of just chills out the whole day. Now, look, I'm not going to say that me and Marty don't have a great brotherly bond because trust me we do but it's not the same it's not the same as having a dog or a cat so i can only imagine what this what this period of your life was like op to have your own cousin your 15 year old cousin steal your cat yeah guys you know cat owners dog owners maybe you have a closer bond than i do with my with my pet and i'm being harsh i don't know maybe i am marty's been in the videos before and i don't want to put bad words on his snake skin i really don't but you know you must kind of get where i'm coming from guys so look if you own a dog or a cat comment down below how would you feel in this situation i'm interested to hear your thoughts and yeah maybe i'd feel the same i don't know thankfully i've never been in this spot let's move on am i the jerk for blowing up on my husband over chicken alfredo i a 38 year old woman am married to my husband who is 42 we've been together since our early 20s and have three small children who are all under 10. He is a mechanic and works anywhere from 60 to 80 hours a week while I work as a hostess three days a week at a restaurant while the kids are at school. I do the majority of the housework and childcare and I don't mind as I understand that he has a hard job and works a lot. He gets the kids on the bus every morning as he leaves for work about 10 minutes afterwards. All I ask of him apart from that is to do his own laundry as his clothes are covered in oil and grime and need to go in by themselves and pick up after himself because the kids destroy the house enough. A couple of times a week, he'll help with dinner and clean up at the end of the day as well. Now guys, I need to mention at this stage that this story starts off quite light and you're thinking, okay, nothing sounds too serious but there are a couple of updates to come down the line and trust me, you are going to want to stick around to hear what happens at the end. It is mental. But for now, let's go back to the the chillness. Over the last two months, my husband has completely stopped helping though. He dumps his clothes on the laundry room floor. His half of the bedroom is a mess. He leaves cans and wrappers all over the living room and he's even stopped getting the kids up which has upset them as they love their mornings with dad. He's also been coming home hours later than usual. I've been letting it slide as he seems very stressed out. But a few days ago, he snapped at me for being a trashy wife for letting his clothes go unwashed. I reminded him that he always did his own laundry and he hadn't asked me to do it. I've been doing it, I just hadn't gotten to it yet. 
He just grumbled and went to go and watch TV. Now, last night I made chicken Alfredo. We have it about once a week because the kids love it and no one's ever complained. Well, he bead and moan through the whole dinner saying that since i'm not taking care of the house i should at least put a good meal on the table that i've just been letting the whole family go to trash and that i should be ashamed of myself for treating him and his children like that he called me a bad wife and mother in front of our children i told the children to go to their rooms and i snapped i screamed at him about how much i do for the household that if it wasn't for me the place would be trashed and he's got no right to treat me like this over chicken alfredo we went back and forth for a while before he left and i have no idea where he went He's not answering my calls or texts. I feel bad now as I shouldn't have reacted like that, especially because I know he's just stressed from work, but it all just kind of built up and came out at once. I just want to know if I was wrong for freaking out on him like that. Now, there is an update to come, as I said, but before we get into that, guys, first of all, I want to pick out a couple of relevant comments, which OP has replied to. First of all, the top comments. I sincerely hope I'm mistaken, but your husband may be having an affair and setting you up to be the bad wife and mother to justify his behavior. OP replied, the thought of an affair hadn't really crossed my mind. I know that his job lost an employee, so the workload has gotten bigger. So I really hope it's just that. Another editor says, in the past two months, have you attempted to find out why your partner has changed so drastically? OP replies, I've asked him, but he tends to brush me off and says that he doesn't want to think about work. I do know they recently lost that employee and the workload has gotten bigger for everyone, but he's had co-workers quit in the past and never behave like this. Someone else asks, have you looked at his paychecks recently? I guess hinting that something else could be going on. OP says, he gets direct deposit to his account that I have no access to and then transfers the amount for bills into our joint accounts. I'm not sure what he does with his pay stubs as I've never seen them. And finally, one commenter says that something is awry and it's not you, OP. Couples counseling is needed now, but keep a watch on your money and protect the kids. It sounds like your husband is checking out. So guys, update is incoming imminently. But before we get into that, whatever platform you are on, if you have the ability to comment, I want you to get down into the comment section and type out what you think is going on here. Exactly what do you think the husband is doing? Now, I'll give you some options because it doesn't have to be that he's having an affair. There are a few things I think that could also have happened. Now, I've not read on, so I actually don't know myself at this stage. But what I'm thinking is that he could easily have also lost his job and is trying to cover that up. Now, just because he's leaving the house doesn't mean he's going to work. He could just be doing something else or who knows, sitting in his car, just groveling and, and just doesn't want to admit to you and the family that he's lost his job and the, you know, the financial implications that could have on your family. That's just my thinking right now. And he's trying to cover it up in some form but he's obviously just in a terrible mood because of that and that may be what's going on guys what do you think get in the comments i want to know your thoughts but don't cheat yeah don't just comment after you've already seen this update that i'm about to give you that would be bad practice and i wouldn't like that so be honest for me nonetheless here is the update i'm excited to see what happens i called my husband for the hundredth time because he still hadn't come home and the kids wanted to know where he was and a woman answered I didn't recognize her voice and he doesn't have a sister. I asked her to put me on the phone with my husband and she asked who I was. I said I was his wife and she laughed into the phone and told me he was busy. We went back and forth with her laughing at me the whole time before telling me she'll send him home soon and hanging up. Oh my gosh. It's now the next morning and he's still not home. I really didn't think he was cheating. I'd really hope this was just a rough patch, but it looks like most of you were right. I'm heartbroken and a little in shock and not really sure what to do right now. My brother said I should come stay with him and I might. Or maybe just bring the kids so they don't have to see us fight. I might update again or I might not, but I'm sure you all know where this is heading anyway. Ah, uh, you know, guys, I, I kind of wanted this not to be the case, but I did have a little bit of an inclination. If you said an affair was going on, congratulations, you were right. But there is one more update. Update two. He came home a few hours after I last updated. I immediately confronted him about the woman answering. He denied cheating, saying it was one of his friends messing with me because he stayed at a friend's house and they must have answered his phone. I told him I don't believe him and to pack some things and leave because I want a divorce. He blew up at this, telling me it was his home, even though my parents bought us the house when we got married, and that he was not going to leave. We argued for a while until I called my brother. 
My brother lives about 20 minutes away, so he got to the house very quickly. And once he got there, my husband calmed down and packed a bag. Once he was gone, my brother helped me contact a divorce lawyer. My brother and his wife check in with us every day. We're all safe and I've had very minimal contact with my now ex-husband. I probably won't update again. And there we go. A sad, unfortunate ending to this one. What I can't really wrap my head around is once you've been caught blatantly cheating, which is the only thing that can be going on here, why at that point do you still make excuses and say, no, I wasn't, man. I was doing something else. What? You can't kick me out. I didn't do anything wrong. This is my house as well. Like, come on. At least have the decency to when you've been caught, hold your hands up and say, yeah, I've been a jerk. I've ruined our lives. Great. Am I the jerk for not telling my girlfriend that my parents are gay? I am a 25 year old man and I have two parents. My birth dad, John, who's 48, and my other dad, Dwayne, who's 45. I call my birth dad, John, dad, and I call my other dad, Dwayne, pops. My birth dad, John, was married to my mum for a few years. Then she left my dad and yeah. They ended up divorcing and now she's somewhere in California. I don't know where or what she's doing. I haven't talked to her in ages. So dad and pops I'm super close with. They are the best parents any child could ask for. I love both of them and they've always been with me. My dad introduced me to pops when I was a little boy and they told me they were in a relationship and I was all for it because I'd saw my dad become lonely and sad when he was single. So seeing the fact that my dad loves someone and has a life partner made me super happy. Pops and dad got married and we've been living an amazing life. I'm probably more close to pops than my own dad due to the fact that pops is really cool and laid back. Of course, I love both of them equally and they love me as well and I'm blessed to have them as parents. For a few months, I've been dating this girl, Bella, who's my age. I thought she's pretty cute and I liked her, so we kicked it. And recently she told me, my parents wanna meet your parents and want to come over for dinner. I said, sure, I'll tell my family. So yesterday, Friday night, Bella comes in. Pops greets her and says, come on in, sweetheart. Dinner is ready. She says, you must be Opie's dad. So good to meet you. And she shakes his hand. And then she sees dad come out of the kitchen. He's holding the mac and cheese tray with the mittens and is putting it on the table. Then Bella says, who's he? I said, oh, that's my dad. She said, I thought he's your dad, referring to Pops. I say, yeah, that's my Pops and that's my dad. She pulls me to the side and says, I didn't know your parents are gay. Oh my God, why didn't you tell me? I genuinely didn't know why. Would that be an issue or something? Because you're dating me, not my parents and all. So it shouldn't matter. But I guess it's a concern for her. Her parents come to the door after they park the car and Bella tells her parents, let's leave. And they left. I told my parents, I'm sorry. And they said, son, don't worry. This is nothing new. And then we all sat down and enjoyed dinner and went to sleep. So am I the jerk for not telling? Well, the saddest part about that story is the ending. Your parents saying to you, this is nothing new. Unfortunately, it's a fact. Homophobia is still rife in 2023. Very, very sad to see. I mean, look, no doubt there's been a lot of progression. My uncles, for example, were able to get married a few years ago. So that's great. However, we have to change the hearts and minds of so many out there that are still just disgusting people. I don't know what the problem is. I really don't. Yeah, maybe you could have told her beforehand, but there's no reason to tell her. Like, I wouldn't tell my girlfriend before meeting my parents, oh, by the way, my parents are straight. So I wouldn't tell her, oh, by the way, my parents are gay. Like, it's not a thing. It doesn't matter. As you said, she's dating you, not your parents. I don't know why that would be a problem. Yeah, just simple homophobia. And that's very sad to see. But at least now you know. That's always a positive. Am I the jerk for falsely accusing a veteran of stolen valor when she couldn't give any details about her service? I am a 34-year-old man and I served as a captain in the Marine Corps. I've left the service and right now I'm doing an MBA. One of my classmates, a 31-year-old woman who we'll call Jess, is very gentle, very soft-spoken and unassuming. Jess and I were working together on a case study once and I started opening up to her about my military service and all the lessons that I've learned from the Corps. Jess enthusiastically told me, that's so cool. I was a surface warfare officer in the Navy. I immediately felt suspicious about this claim. As I said, Jess is very demure and she doesn't really have the bravado that is required in the military environment. At least I feel like a certain amount of bravado is required. Yes, I still humored her and I began asking about the details of her military experience, where she deployed, what courses she went through, what ship she served on, etc, etc. Suddenly, Jess got all tight-lipped and she couldn't say anything specific about military life. She kept making excuses along the lines of, 
it just wasn't a good period of my life and I'd rather not talk about it. Eventually, I felt like I'd done enough snooping around and I bluntly told her that she was BSing and that I'd rather not work with a phony. I talked about this experience with my friend Max at our school's veterans organization. I told Max to be wary of anything Jess says. Max responded by telling me that Jess did serve. He's seen her paperwork and ID and everything and that in fact, one of her MBA recommendation letters was written by a retired rear admiral who held Jess in high regard. Whoops. The next time I met Jess before our class started, I tried to act chummy towards her and make up for accusing her of being a liar. She laughed in my face and told me to pan sound poorly. And for those of you who don't know, yes, she was being derisive here. So am I the jerk? Yeah, this is just making me cringe horrifically. This is so embarrassing. You can just, I can just like see this in my mind. I can hear OP's tone of voice saying, uh, yeah, you're not military. I am, by the way, just gloating horrifically and trying to catch someone out when there's just no need to. It's just like, it's, it's giving absolute jealousy vibes here and just, you know, arrogance and trying to make your ego feel amazing and just, you know, feeling good about yourself for no real reason, putting other people down. I, I don't see the point. Why does she have to prove to you that she was in the military? She doesn't. Can't you yourself just be happy that you're in the military and be proud of what you did and that can be that and not just like be really cynical about someone else? It's just embarrassing. And yeah, saying pound sand poorly, take, take it, you know, you deserve it. I'm sorry. If anything, she should have gone harder than that. I'm sorry. It's quite embarrassing from your perspective that you are undermining someone who's put, you know, their country first and, and, and spent all those years in the Navy for you just to say, yeah, I don't believe you. I'm calling BS. And you're downright wrong. Embarrassing, arrogance personified. You are the jerk. Yeah, I've just read this comment right here. You're the jerk. And I'm guessing being a veteran is 90% of your personality. I'm sure he works it into every conversation possible. Exactly. Am I the jerk for telling my girlfriend that I told her so after one of her male friends tried to get with her? My girlfriend and I have been together for about a year now. My girlfriend has more than a few guy friends, and I'm not one of those guys that thinks men and women can't be friends. However, with two of these guys, it's very clear that they want more than just friendship with her. Like, clear as day, to the point where I don't get how she doesn't see it. If I can notice just by the weird energy they try to exude when I'm present, she should be able to get it too, right? Wrong. Anytime I pointed this out, she gets upset with me. She tells me that I'm being jealous and reading into things that aren't there. I argue back that I'm just letting her know, and as a guy, I can probably tell much better than she can since women tend to be a little slow regarding things like this. So, Two nights ago, she was hanging out with her friends and this guy was present. From what she told me, they were all drinking and he said some things that implied he'd want to be with her. She was made uncomfortable by this and the night ended shortly after. Fast forward to yesterday morning. She got a series of texts apologizing for what he said, but then backpedaling and saying he would treat her so much better than me and that she's wasting her time with me. She of course said no and was upset with him. After she told me, I just read the text and simply said, Wow, who could have seen this coming? A bit sarcastically. This set her off and she got mad. She said that I was being such a huge jerk to her and she had no way of seeing this coming. She's been angry at me since. So, am I the jerk? Okay then, interesting one here. I actually don't think you're in the wrong here for, for the overall context of what happened. You know, what you said did happen and you saw it coming a mile away and yeah, you were right. So I don't think you're necessarily the full jerk. What I will say is that the way you went about this was very jerk-like. I mean, first of all, saying that women are a little slow on things like this is just sexist, not gonna lie. And then gloating in her face, your, your girlfriend's face after the fact when she has clearly been in an uncomfortable position and actually didn't see this going on. It's not the right thing to do. Surely you'd be supportive there and you say, yes, you know, of course you saw this coming, but you're still gonna be there for your girlfriend and at least, you know, be nice, not just say, oh yeah. What a shock. Like, who's that going to help? It's funny because Redditors have said on Reddit here that you definitely are the jerk. And I don't completely agree because I think if you're in that position yourself, it can also be uncomfortable. And sometimes it's nice to be justified with your opinion by things like this happening. But I would say that there's no need to get all cocky about it. You're still in a relationship with this woman. You don't want to be a jerk to her. Am I the jerk for labeling all the bottles in the house because my adult children are idiots? I have two of my children living with me. One has graduated from college and the other is a junior. I have to purchase medicated shampoo because of a scalp condition. It's by prescription and it's expensive. 
It also comes in packaging that is meant to be stored upright, not on its side, and definitely not upside down. My daughter has her hair products in the shower and I do not touch them. My son also keeps his axe, body wash, shampoo, conditioner, women repellent in the shower. I also do not touch it since I have zero desire to smell like a high school locker room. I keep my shampoo in there as well since it's my house and I can keep my stuff wherever I want. For some reason, the two of them cannot understand that not all packaging is meant to be upside down. They've already wasted an entire bottle of my shampoo by storing it upside down after they touched it for some reason. It all dripped out the spout, which it's not engineered for. I talked to both of them and I explained that they should not touch my stuff and that if they accidentally tip over my shampoo, it was meant to be stored with the lid at the top. I came home last week to find my shampoo leaking out of the bottle again, upside down. So I ordered 500 stickers that say this side up with an arrow pointing upwards when the words are upright. And I put them on everything in the house that might leak with my shampoo being literally covered in them. They had friends over last weekend and they noticed that the relish, ketchup, mustard, mayonnaise, etc., were all labeled. My kids were embarrassed when they explained why. They think I'm a jerk for putting labels on everything since they only screw with my shampoo. But since it's $80 a bottle, I said I'd take off all the labels if they agree to pay for my shampoo. Thus far, they have declined. I mean, this is just brilliant. Yes, it's very petty. Yes, it's patronizing, but... I think it's completely fair, especially when you're paying $80. I mean, that is a sizable amount of money for a prescription for medicine, right? And it's getting ruined by your children. It is your house. I say do what you want. The, the, the easy thing to do would say, listen, you ruined my, my product, my, my medicine. You've got to pay me for it, right? I need to go and get some more. It's medicinal. I need it. You, you've ruined it. I need the $80. So let's be honest, they can count themselves quite fortunate that you've not forced them to pay up. However, this, if anything, is a much better way of getting your point across. Lovely stuff. And yeah, as you said, if you're going to remove the labels for them, then they're going to have to pay you the cash, which they're obviously not going to do. So I love it. Am I the jerk for man spreading on a plane? A few months ago, I, a 26 year old man, was alone on a long flight, roughly six hours. I had a middle seat between a young woman in her 20s in the window seat and another woman in her 30s on the aisle. Now I'm tall and I'm never comfortable on planes. My knees always dig into the seat in front and it can be quite painful. I usually try to take a walk around the airport before flights to stretch my legs, but I neglected to this time. It was Spirit Airlines, so even less legroom than usual. About half an hour after takeoff, I found my left knee inching to the side for the sweet relief of open space, specifically the no man's land in between seats, level with the shared armrest. But I wasn't paying attention to my knee the entire time. I'll concede it's possible that at some point I was occupying space that rightfully belonged to my window seat neighbor. All was well for roughly two hours. But at this point, the woman in the window seat called over the flight attendant. She asked her something like, could you tell him to keep his freaking leg in his own freaking seat? With horror, I understood that she was talking about me. I instantly retracted my leg in deep shame. She added something about his enormous pee-pee. My understanding was that it was meant to be a snide reference to the idea that spreading your legs is about male genital comfort. But she wasn't speaking very clearly and the flight attendant didn't seem to understand her. The flight attendant asked her some sort of clarifying question, but she didn't answer and eventually the attendant went away. I'd been shocked into silence, but when the attendant left, I frantically began to apologize. However, she refused to speak to me. She acted like she didn't hear me. Instead, she started furiously texting on her phone. Yes, texting during a flight, I thought it was weird too. Our seat woman said she had some extra space on her side that I could use, but then promptly went to sleep. Oh well. I tried again to apologize to window seat woman, but again, she ignored me. I went from embarrassed to confused. I kept replaying it in my head, wondering why she didn't simply ask me to move my knee instead of calling over the attendant. I started sneaking peeks at her phone. My defense is that I was baffled by her behavior and wanted answers. I'll admit that I was being judgmental too. But here's why. She spent the last three hours of the flight watching TikToks about shaming obese people and texting someone she called Pappy. I didn't see all of it, but a significant portion was definitely about me. She wrote, men really do be too much sometimes with a laughing emoji. She ignored me the whole rest of the flight and I ignored her. I got a good but painful workout of whatever muscle it is that keeps your knees together. See, this is honestly a tough one. I don't know. Look, I, I, don't, I actually don't know what I think about this. Realistically, 
This bloke shouldn't be doing this, right? I hold my hands up. If you know your tool and you know you're going to have problem in a middle seat, it, it's a tough one. However, like, what now that you're in that position and you're with... I mean, I just, you can tell I'm conflicted here, right? I really don't know. If I put myself in that spot, I'm quite tall. I'm not, I mean, I'm not that tall. I'm six foot. If I put myself in that spot, yeah, and... I didn't book the middle seat. I just booked a flight. Yeah, I'm not super tall, but I can be a little bit uncomfortable in small seats. I don't want to spend extra money for something that I may not necessarily need. And uh, I've got unlucky and I'm in the middle seat and I'm with two women and I see that there's a little bit more space I can get at. Am I really going to not use it? I don't, I, I don't know. Yeah, it's not great. I get it from a woman's perspective to have someone inching into your area. But it wasn't as if this guy was totally dominating. The middle seat is by far the worst. We all know this. You get, I think, in my opinion, less space anyway. Because on the window, you have that bit of window. Your knee can go down the side of the seat in front. You don't get that in the middle. And on the aisle, you can stretch out a little bit into the aisle as well if you really want to. The middle, you just don't get that. However, I do think that this guy could have done this, could have gone about this differently. He could have asked beforehand. I don't know what he was doing by snooping on someone's phone. I mean, that is just pure wrong. I, I don't know, though. Like, if it was such a big issue, wouldn't the flight attendant have said, yeah, we need to change this or something like that, instead of just saying, oh, it's fine, leave it? I don't know. Like, this is one where I really think that you guys need to come in in the comments and let me know, because <sighs> it's a tough one. It really, really is. I, I, you know what? I, I know what the majority of you are going to say, that this guy is the jerk. He should have booked a bigger seat, knowing that this was going to be an issue. I get that. I just think practically, is that likely? Again, I put myself in that spot. Is it that bad if I just use a little, a touch more space? Yes, ask. And yes, don't snoop and just be nice about it. But he did frantically apologize. He didn't know. Not not that he should have known. Like, you know, he, he, it's not the sort of thing where you go, oh, I didn't realize. Therefore, it's not my fault. I get it. I don't know. I really don't know. It's easy to say, pay for extra leg space. Do this, do that, you know, be more prepared. But let's, let's just be practical about this. In a real world, what's the answer? Is this guy the jerk? I'll leave that one up to you lot. I really will. Also, I need to just say that like, this woman has handled this awfully. What do you think? She's just being a Karen. I get it. It's not ideal for her, but there are better ways of handling this. Why is she not clarifying her point to the flight attendant? Why is she just going in on you? Surely any reasonable person says to just you, hey, would you mind just, you're coming into my area a little bit here. I know you're taller. I know I'm smaller, but we pay for the same amount of space. That would be completely reasonable. And then if OP doesn't do that, then you say, okay, I'm going to have to get the flight attendant because I'm not getting my money's worth here. But she didn't do that as well, which I don't know. It makes it, it makes it a little bit more debatable for me. But yes, as I said, get in the comments. Let's carry on. Am I the jerk for refusing to take my girlfriend to nice places because she eats like a kid? My girlfriend is an incredibly picky eater. Like I said in my title, she eats like she's 10 years old. In fact, I'll give a short list of things that she refuses to eat. Unflavored water, fish, excluding fried shrimp, anything with bones, cheese other than sharp cheddar, spinach, onions, garlic, pasta without red sauce, eggs, spicy food, aioli, ketchup, potatoes other than french fries, pastries with fruit, citrus, sausage, or any non-American food. This compares to me, someone who grew up in multiple different regions of the US and lived abroad for a few years, so I'm a bit more adventurous when it comes to food. Whenever me and my girlfriend go out somewhere nice, she ends up getting the same meals, usually either a burger or chicken tenders and fries. We could be going to an authentic Nepalese restaurant and she'll get the French fries and white rice. To me, it's kind of embarrassing to go to a restaurant where there's a dress code and for her to order chicken tenders and fries. It especially bothers me that since I typically pay, I end up paying 15 bucks for chicken tenders that I could get from the freezer section at Walmart for five bucks. Recently in our area, a very nice dinner place opened up and my girlfriend has been dying to go. I took a look at the place and the menu and saw that it looked nice, but the food was kind of pricey. She said she was probably going to get chicken tenders as per usual. I asked her, what's the point of going then if I can toss some tenders in the air fryer for her and not spend a ridiculous amount of money on it? She asked why I had an attitude about this. And I told her that I thought it was a waste of time and money to go to a nice place to get little kids food. She interpreted this as me calling her a little kid. I clarified that I wasn't calling her a child. However, it is kind of childish for her to eat the way she does. I also said that if she's going to order food we can make at home, there's not any point in us going anywhere. This led to an argument about me thinking I'm better than her. So, am I the jerk? Okay, this is, I'm not going to lie guys. I'm being tested here today. This is another really controversial one that I think is super close and it could go either way. Right, let's go through this from the beginning. First of all, 
Is it a shame that your girlfriend is an incredibly picky eater when you are not? I would say yes. And I would also say that as someone like you who clearly enjoys their food, experiencing different cuisines, has done so throughout their lives, it's a bit of a deep question. But are you really that compatible with someone that eats chicken tenders every time you go out? I'm not entirely sure. I, I feel like that's quite a big thing. If you can't enjoy that with your partner, it's a shame. It's not the be all and end all, of course, but it is a shame. And I can say from my experience, one of the nicest dates that I went on was going to some weird like restaurant and just trying all the weird food. I think it was Nordic food. It was all very strange and some of it was disgusting, some of it was lovely. But the whole point was you tried it and you, you, know, you had a different experience together and it was good fun, right? Not being able to do this, is a shame and I, I agree it is a little bit weird that she's so keen to go to a new restaurant in the knowledge that she's going to get the same old food however going to a restaurant is not all about food it's also about the experience of being with someone and who knows she may love seeing you eat the food and hearing your thoughts about it and ultimately if you are in a relationship with this woman which you are then the food is just one small part of it right she may just love spending time with you and she knows that you love trying different food and different cuisines and she may just want to be a part of that i don't know there's a little bit of a lack of information here but that is what i am thinking i will say that you do come across as slightly patronizing as well i don't think it's the worst thing for someone just to be super picky obviously it's not ideal and you know of course in an ideal world you would be able to experience these things with her but is it the end of the world that she's gonna have chicken every time is it really that bad that you have to spend a little bit more money on on stuff that you could get from the shop to enjoy her company and being together i don't think so what i would say though is that there are some compromises that you could make here for example you could say to her look i don't particularly enjoy paying for things that we could get from a freezer and eat at home when we're out at nice restaurants at exorbitant prices for what the actual contents of the dish is would you mind paying for it i think that's i think that's a reasonable request if she says no then yeah it's a problem if not you go from there or you could say really why are we going to these restaurants if you're not going to eat the food and then you can actually get to the bottom of why she wants to go and probably there's a reasonable answer there i don't know i feel like there's a, a bit of information missing and there is an agreement that you could both come to and look, i get it it is a little bit embarrassing for you but this is the person that you are dating and at the very least she is eating every time you go out like imagine if she was the opposite and saying no i don't want to go to these places with you because i don't want to eat the food right at least you're going and experiencing this together and you're not having to go and find another friend or parent or whatever to go to these restaurants with i see some comments on reddit saying you can do this with other people nah i think it's a nice thing to do with your partner even if they're not eating the food and she's not stopping you from doing that and enjoying these new cuisines in fact she's encouraging it i don't know i think there's more to this more information required something you can definitely work on and now for our final post of this episode am i the jerk for leaving when my brother-in-law wouldn't let me in the hot tub my brother-in-law just bought a new house he lives about four hours from us last weekend my husband and i went to visit him for a few days and see the house for the first time long story short i got my period while i was sleeping and the guest room sheets had a small blood stain about the size of a quarter my husband helped me to strip the bed and i went down to the laundry room to pre-tree and then wash the sheets when they were done the blood stain was 100 percent gone but when we told my brother-in-law, he looked completely disgusted. He inspected the sheets super closely for a very long time. And finally, I was like, Jesus, if you're looking that closely and can't find a stain, can't you trust me that I got it out? He seemed really put out by the whole thing. That night, we had plans to hang out in my brother-in-law's hot tub in the backyard. But after dinner, he told me that I wasn't allowed in the hot tub because of my period. I was shocked and I explained that the nighttime leak was because I hadn't been expecting my period and I'd been fast asleep all night, but that it was perfectly safe and sanitary for me to put in a tampon and sit in the hot tub for an hour, but he wouldn't budge. My husband had my back and told him that he was being ridiculous and it ended up turning into a big argument. Eventually, my husband and I decided to pack our stuff and stay at a nearby hotel and then we drove home the next morning. Now my brother-in-law is fuming at us for leaving and for not respecting his home. He also Venmo requested my husband $100 for new sheets, which he's refusing to pay. But trust that if the stain hadn't come out, we would have been happy to replace them. He told his whole side of the family who have decided to fully stay out of it. Now I wish they had our backs, but at least they're not piling onto us. So are my husband and I jerks for leaving and not paying for the sheets. I mean, obviously not. What a way to end the episode with someone that is so 
dumb that I want to use stronger words to describe him. How thick can you possibly be? Right. How about this? Right. Think about this. The Olympics, an amazing sporting event, an event that personally I absolutely love. Now go with me on this analogy. Trust me, do because we'll get there eventually. Now in the Olympics, they have some things called water sports. Ooh, for example, swimming, diving, synchronized swimming, plus others. Water polo, for example. Now, if a woman, an athlete who is going to be competing in the Olympics in one of these water sports gets their period during the Olympics, which by the way, lasts for two weeks. Oh, that's a real shame because they're not going to be allowed to compete in the Olympics anymore because there'll be blood everywhere and it will be disgusting. Oh, wait, that's not what happens? I'm sorry, this guy is so dumb. I, I think like he needs a biology lesson or some sort of lesson on tampons or just periods in general. If women weren't allowed to go in water when they're on their period, then that would just be absolutely ridiculous. And frankly, the Olympics would have to be cancelled. I mean, imagine all female athletes on their period at once. What, what are you meant to do? Swimming's cancelled. Synchronized swimming is done. Yeah, I don't care if you've got a ticket. There's no more athletics. It's a shame, isn't it? It really is a shame. But I mean, what? Cancel the steeplechase. If you know, you know. That is, that is, a, I don't know if that would, that'd be interesting. Yeah, all in all, a very, very stupid man. <laughs> Just epitomized by the fact that he wanted you to pay for sheets when there was not even a blood stain. Ugh. Anyone reasonable would just say, yeah, it happens. No worries, guys. And by the way, thanks for sorting it. I actually really appreciate that. But no, not your brother. Am I the jerk for having a dry wedding and serving only water for drinks? Okay, so basically my husband and I are getting married later this year. Each of our size of the family are fairly big. It will be around 100 to 150 people total. My husband and I are paying for this all ourselves, as well as my grandma, who said she doesn't care one way or the other on this issue. She just loves weddings. We have a lot of kids in our family, so we decided against making it child free, but we did decide to make it dry. So there will be no alcohol of any kind at our wedding. Honestly, this doesn't have anything to do with there being kids there, but due to the fact that my fiance and I don't drink, nothing against people who do, it's just not for us and we don't want to. On top of that, we only really drink water. We rarely, if ever, drink soda. So most of the time, it's only water with the occasional juice and milk. We don't even drink coffee. So obviously the food, which is a part my grandma is not paying for, is going to be expensive for that many people. We're having our wedding catered, so everyone will have a good choice of food to choose from, but to drink, only water will be provided. We don't want to have to pay for alcohol or soda. It's just a large added expense when we can just do filtered water for a much cheaper cost. Well, when family and friends found out, everyone got angry. Some didn't really care, but some are really upset about it, saying that I could just have an open bar so I don't have to pay for drinks. We could, but still have to pay for the bartender, and we just really don't want to bother with alcohol there. Or we should at least have soda because how can we expect everyone to drink only water? The kids will be upset. The wedding will be boring. That this is not how weddings work, etc. So, am I the jerk? I didn't think that this would be a problem. It's only water. I mean, don't most people drink water every day anyway? Should we pay the extra to have soda to make the family happy? Okay, let's get one thing completely straight. There is no doubt in my mind that you do not have to serve alcohol at your wedding if you don't want to for any reason. You don't have to accommodate people. It's your decision if you want to serve alcohol or not. I, and I completely back it. Look, I would argue that it's fun to have alcohol at a wedding, but if the bride and groom don't want alcohol there, that's tough. And you got to accept that. What I can't accept though, is there only being water? That is where I think you are the jerk because no, most people don't drink water every day. I mean, a lot of people do, of course, but not most people. To force everyone there to drink just water is harsh. It's supposed to be fun, right? Fun, to me, is having more options on a menu than just filtered water. Yeah, chuck some juices in there. Chuck some soda in there. I mean, if I'm a kid going to a wedding and there's only water, not gonna lie, I'm throwing hands. I am throwing hands. I'm fuming. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna put some real pressure on the groom to get me a Diet Coke immediately because that is an absolute farce. So yeah, as I, as I say, nothing wrong with not serving alcohol. That's your decision. Only serving water? Nah. That is very controlling. And again, as someone sensible mentioned, just make it a bar that you have to pay for. 
You don't have to pay for it yourself. And how much is a bartender for a few hours? I mean, come on. Compared to the cost of an entire wedding, that is not expensive. Do the right thing. Give the people the drinks they want. Am I the jerk for asking my girlfriend to watch my favorite movies with me? Last weekend was my 28th birthday. My girlfriend, who is 25, had asked what I wanted to do. And I said I wanted to watch my favorite movie trilogy, Lord of the Rings. I don't think my girlfriend was thrilled, but she didn't say anything and agreed. She has seen them before, and I don't think she really likes them very much, but she knows I love them, so she doesn't really say anything besides they aren't really her thing. But I really wanted to make a date of watching them, and I went over to her house because she has a really big, comfortable couch. About 10 minutes into the first movie, and I look over and she is browsing on her phone. I was a little miffed, but didn't say anything. She basically scrolled through her phone the entire movie. When we started the second movie, she opened a bottle of wine and proceeded to drink the whole thing while still sitting on her phone. I was pretty irritated at this point because she wasn't even paying attention at all. The third movie started and by then she'd opened another bottle of wine and was asleep within the first 20 minutes. I was really mad at that point and just left and went home. A few hours later, I got a text asking where I went. I told her I was mad that she couldn't pay attention to my favorite movies on my birthday. She told me I was a jerk and to grow the hell up. I've texted her a couple of times, but she hasn't responded. So, am I in the wrong? Wow, there we go. Back to back jerks, in my opinion, to end this episode. What do you expect in this situation? Your girlfriend has explicitly said to you she doesn't like these films, yet you are forcing her... Well, I mean, look, it's, it's a tough one, isn't it? She's doing a great thing, in my opinion, by actually just sitting there with you. How long is the Lord of the Rings trilogy, by the way? You know what? I'm going to look this up on the fly. Lord of the Rings trilogy overall runtime. Now, my guess is about 10 hours. It's 11.2 hours. You're expecting your girlfriend, who doesn't like these films, and by the way, I sympathize with her because I don't really like them either. I know it's controversial, but it's true. I actually have never actually properly watched them, so maybe you should have invited me to your birthday party and not your girlfriend, and we could have watched them together but yeah you're asking a girlfriend to sit on the couch and focus on something that she has said she doesn't like for 11.2 hours now if that's me i'm also turning to the wine and you can't blame me come on the fact of the matter is she's been nice by even doing it in the first place she's explicitly doing something she doesn't like and i'm explicitly saying explicitly a lot here that's how explicit her reaction could have been crazy i know but yeah uh sorry doing something that you like on your birthday that you know someone else doesn't like as much, but it's going to come along and do it anyway. That's fine, because it's your day. I get that. But forcing someone to sit on the sofa and focus for 11.2 hours is not fine. I'm sorry. It's just not. And yeah, you are the jerk. Am I the jerk for refusing to forgive my dad for breaking our deal? When I, a 17-year-old man, was eight, my parents bought me a piano and signed me up for lessons. I was super excited because I love music. Over time, I kind of became known as the piano guy at school. I play at school concerts, accompany the school jazz choir, and play once a week for the residents at a couple of retirement homes in our town. When I was 15, I started to talk about quitting lessons, and my parents quickly tried to guilt me out of it. I told them I wanted to try other things, and that between piano and studying, I didn't have much time left for other extracurriculars. My dad proposed a deal. If I kept playing and taking lessons until I reached level 10 RCM, Royal Conservatory of Music, and continued to keep my grades up at school, he would buy me a new car of my choice. I jumped at it and we shook hands on the deal. I should explain that my family is well off financially. I have a very privileged life, but I wouldn't say I've been spoiled. If I ever want a luxury item like a new phone or games console, I have to buy it myself with money that I've saved from summer and after school jobs. I should also explain that my dad's big on loopholes. When we compete, he always finds a way to win. And when I do, it doesn't count because of some loophole. It drives me nuts, but he thinks it's hilarious. Whenever I complain about him not playing fair, his answer is always the same. Life isn't fair. So because of our deal, I kept up with my lessons. I spent about one to two hours a day on piano while keeping my grades up. Last summer, I took my level nine RCM exams and passed, fulfilling my part of the deal. I told my dad I'd chosen the BMW X5 plug-in hybrid SUV. A couple of months ago, on my birthday, I came downstairs for breakfast, and my dad told me there was a surprise waiting for me in the garage. I ran out, and sitting in the middle of the floor was a 124th scale toy BMW X5. My dad burst out laughing and said, A deal's a deal, so as promised, here is your brand new BMW. My heart absolutely broke. I asked if he was being serious and he said I couldn't seriously have expected him to buy a 17 year old a real brand new BMW and that we could discuss getting me a reasonably priced used car. I said we had a deal and I fulfilled my end of it. 
He said he did too, since I never said that the car had to be full size and drivable. I said he wasn't being fair. His response, life isn't fair. Ever since this happened, I've been distant with my dad. I honestly feel like he betrayed my trust and that he deliberately made a fool out of me. He keeps bringing up the idea of a used car, but I told him I'm not interested, which I admit is kind of petty. I have enough money saved that I can buy a cheap used car myself. And I just feel like if I accept one from him now, it's like saying that breaking his promise didn't matter and that he didn't do anything wrong. So, am I the jerk? No, absolutely not. That's not even up for discussion. A promise is a promise. It doesn't matter what he said. If that man, your father, cannot keep his word, then he doesn't deserve your respect. It's as simple as that in my opinion. How about this? One day when you're older and he wants you to come home for Christmas or something like that, you say, sure, I'll be there. Then just mail him a picture of you and say, oh, there I am. Uh, You didn't specify that I didn't actually have to be there physically. I'm there in spirit in a photo frame. It's a weird analogy. But that's kind of what's going on here, right? Like you said you'd do something and you use some stupid loophole to get away with it when in reality, you're just being an idiot. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, that is an expensive car for a 17 year old, but it is also what you said. So how about just don't say it in the first place and don't make empty promises. Am I the jerk for calling my sister cruel for her tattoo idea? My sister is 28 and I'm a 26 year old man. My sister, Nikki, has always had a strange relationship with our parents, especially my mum. I'm clearly not privy to the reasons because things are fine with me and my parents. When Nikki went to college, she met her creative writing professor as a freshman and they got close immediately. They would do a lot together and work closely on a few different writing projects. Nikki never specifically said this, but it was obvious to anyone who saw them interact that they had a substitute mother-daughter type relationship which hurt my mum a lot to see. I always thought she'd grow out of it or that the prof would move on, but 10 years later, they were still very close. About a month ago, the professor died unexpectedly and it devastated Nikki. She was really depressed over the holidays, which of course was all in front of my mum and was a difficult reminder that Nikki loved the prof as a mother way more than she ever loved my mum as a mother. She still talks to my parents and stuff and they don't fight or anything, but Nikki is very distant and doesn't tell them anything about her life beyond the bare minimum. My mum tried to comfort Nikki, but Nikki was doing her distant thing and didn't want comfort. Something unfortunate that happened to Nikki is that when she got the call that she died, she was brewing tea and in the shock of the news she spilled boiling water on her arm which burned her kind of badly on her wrist i think the burn was like on the borderline of second and third degree and definitely still looked pretty rough during the holidays nikki said it was especially hard because in addition to the physical pain every time she looks at it she's reminded of the moment she found out the prof died which i totally get I was on FaceTime with Nikki and she said she talked to her tattoo artist friend who said that the burn should be able to heal well enough to get a tattoo over it. Nikki then excitedly told me about her idea, which is a type of flower that the prof gave her a bouquet of for her undergrad graduation. My mum was so embarrassed that day because she didn't get Nikki flowers, but the prof did. And Nikki was parading them around so happy and it was a reminder of their connection. I guess Nikki and the prof exchanged these flowers for every special occasion, like birthdays, etc. So now she wants to get a decent size tattoo and a highly visible spot of something that will remind everyone of the prof. I told Nikki that this seemed really cruel to my mum, who already feels cast aside and like she's in exile from Nikki, and that's without the constant permanent reminder. Nikki kind of scoffed and said, I can't believe you think you have the right to tell me not to do this. She called me a jerk and hung up and is still not talking to me except for a very brief text saying congrats for a promotion I just got. My parents aren't commenting. My dad said I should have just kept quiet, even though he agrees. And my mum made no comment, but seemed grateful that I stood up for her. I feel like I was just being protective of my mum. But am I the jerk? All right, I just had a look at the comments on Reddit for this one because, you know, I'm always interested to see what people on Reddit are saying before I give my opinion. And I think we differ slightly. A lot of the comments are saying that, OP, you are the jerk in this situation. And I get it. I really do. However, I think that's a little bit too strong to actually call you the jerk. I don't think you're in the wrong for this, really. I think in reality, you're just misunderstanding your sister's situation. Because from your perspective, I get it. You feel like your sister is favoring someone else and that's unfair on your mum, who you have a good relationship and you don't quite understand it perhaps but in reality you have to understand that your sister and your mum do not have anywhere near the same sort of relationship that you and your mum have and in actuality your sister has been very lucky in her life to have someone come in and replace her mum for that role because her mum for whatever reason hasn't been able to do it nonetheless it's clear that this person played a massive role in your sister's life and getting a tattoo in that exact area the timing of when you heard that person had died yeah terrible but yeah a great thing to do and I definitely definitely wouldn't say that she shouldn't do that.
that. Look, I get it from your perspective. It's nice to stick up for your mum and you probably don't get it. But from her point of view, that is probably maybe even the most important person in her life that's gone and she wants to remember them. Am I the jerk for not giving my daughter her education fund money? I am a 54 year old man and I have two children, a 23 year old daughter and 21 year old son with my wife. When the kids were young, my parents set up education funds for both of them, which was very generous. My wife and I always expected our kids to attend college and then graduate school as we'd done. I have a PhD, my wife has a master's. Because of this, we decided not to use the funds for our kids' undergrad degrees and didn't tell them about the money. My daughter has always been more into the liberal arts, while my son is more of a STEM guy. My wife and I worried about her ability to find a job, but she insisted on studying music and film in college. She was accepted to some top schools and chose to attend a rather expensive one, but she had scholarships to cover almost all of her tuition. Everything else, plus living expenses, was her responsibility. She lived in a very small apartment shared with friends in a not so nice area far from campus, but she was fine and learned how to budget effectively. After graduating, she luckily found a job that doesn't pay extremely well, but she enjoys and scrapped the idea of grad school. My son decided to do engineering and he also expressed that he had no interest in grad school. My wife and I were disappointed, but accepted it since at this point, he's already all set up with a very good job when he completes school. Since he did not receive as many scholarships as his sister, we decided to use his education fund to cover his tuition and living expenses. He was able to get a large and nice apartment of his own close to the school, which is important since his classes are so demanding and he needs a comfortable space to work. My daughter was confused and asked how he could afford this and he told her about the education fund. She called us and asked why she didn't have one and we told her she did, we just didn't use it because we hoped she would attend grad school. She seemed hurt by this and asked if there was any way she could have the money now. We explained that there would be a fee to simply withdraw the money for non-education uses and if we chose to do that, it would belong to her grandparents so they could put it towards their own use. She's been quiet and short when answering our texts and hasn't answered our calls at all since then. I know that it seems unfair to her, but it's not really her money in the first place and she's no longer in college. Plus, her brother only received it for educational purposes and it wouldn't be right for her to just have it to spend now. So, am I the jerk? Now, I think it's pretty obvious in this spot that yes, OP, you are. However, OP has given us a couple of updates which we'll get to first before I give my overarching opinion. Update one. I understand the consensus is that my wife and I are the jerks. I texted my daughter to ask if she wanted us to withdraw the money for her and what she wanted to do. This was her response. I don't care. Maybe they can transfer it to their other grandchild, who is five, by the way, if the fee is seriously too much. I don't know about grad school. I haven't thought about it much recently. If I do apply, it wouldn't be for another couple years and i hadn't been counting on having any financial help in the first place so it really doesn't even matter thanks for asking though update two my wife and i are discussing our daughter's response and our next actions to resolve this situation for context my wife has always had a strained relationship with my daughter and did not approve of many of her life choices she believes we should take our daughter's words at face value and assume she no longer wants the money From some of the responses here, I fear that my daughter's response was out of resentment and I suggested taking out as much money as her brother was given so at least they received the same amount. Yes, that is the obvious thing to do here. She could use it responsibly towards rent, groceries, transportation, etc. or in some other way to further her career so it would still be for educational purposes in a sense. My wife, though, is standing firm in her opinion, and we will continue talking it through tomorrow. Many have asked about where my parents stand on this. At this point, they're not mentally aware enough to really participate in the discussion. They did know about our grad school stipulation, and they thought it was fine. They also knew that we took out some money for our son once we were certain he was not pursuing an advanced degree, and they were fine with that as well. They said it was our decision as parents what to do with our daughter's fund, and they would support whatever we decided for her. It wouldn't be useful to ask them what to do with it now, but I've always said that whatever is unused will go back to their care. I've tried to call my daughter with no luck, which is why I sent the text. Despite what many have said here, I hope this does not end our relationship. Well, mate, unless you fix up pretty quickly, there's a lot of danger that it might. I just don't understand how it took you such a long time to arrive at that conclusion that, yes, you should have at least given your daughter the same amount as you gave your son. I'll have to have a look back through it, but from what I could kind of gauge the first time reading it, it didn't even seem as if your son was was fully using the money on education. He didn't go to grad school. 
same as your daughter. I don't really understand why there's a difference there. Okay, looking back now, fair enough, you used it to cover his tuition, but you also used it to cover his living expenses, but you didn't use your daughter's education fund to cover her living expenses. Like off the rip, that just doesn't seem fair to me. I don't care if she's got scholarships for her tuition fees. Like she's clearly clever. Why would you punish that? Clever and hardworking, I must say. You don't just get scholarships by being clever, that's for sure. Imagine hearing that your parents could have financially helped you and then they just chose not to. Like that is brutal, I'm sorry. And yeah, the more I think about it, if you want to have any relationship ongoing with your daughter, you need to at least just send her the money right now. Probably all of it. I mean, just send it to her. And then hopefully she'll give you some form of forgiveness. Am I the jerk for posting the reasons that I excluded some people from my child-free wedding? My sister got married last summer. She had a very elegant and beautiful wedding and reception planned. It was child-free. She sent gracious notes to everyone who sent their regrets and thanked them for understanding her desires for her wedding and respect them enough to RSVP in the negative. She also invited them to a party later that summer at her home if they wanted to take pictures with her and her wedding party in their fancy clothes. I thought it was well handled and classy. Several people didn't understand the meaning of child-free and brought their kids anyway. One screamed through the ceremony and the mum would not leave the chapel because she did not want to cause a fuss. There were no extra places for them at the reception, so their parents had to share their food with them. The worst was the kid that wanted a cupcake off the table the wedding cake was on. He lost control and tipped the wedding cake onto the floor. My dad saved it, but there was a handprint on the lowest tier and a lot of cupcakes at the floor. All in all, it was four families that brought uninvited children. My wedding invitations just went out over Christmas. We're getting married in May. I know this is a long time, but we have a lot of out of town, country, and even continent guests we hope will come. We did not invite these four families to our wedding. We have a Facebook group for the wedding for people to share pictures and memories that we might put in the wedding video. They found out about the group and posted to my personal page about being excluded and asked why we're not having them. I messaged them privately and asked them to take down their posts and explain that my wedding was smaller and I wasn't having as many guests as my sister. They went public again and complained about me excluding them for no good reason. So I posted the receipts. I also posted a video my cousin sent me of the kid crying during the ceremony and the parents doing nothing. The video of the kid freaking out because he had to share trout for supper. The before and after pictures of the wedding cake table. And I also asked if they knew in advance that they were not supposed to bring their kids to the wedding. Then everyone started piling on. To them. I guess there was a lot of stuff I missed. Including one of them changing a kid on the table with the guest book because the closest bathroom didn't have a baby station. Now they're calling me a jerk for embarrassing them for having children and wanting to be part of family events. I said that they could not understand why rules were in place and that is why they were not invited. My uncle posted about how embarrassed he was that his daughter was one of these entitled jerks and offered to pay my sister for the cake that got wrecked. He'd been unable to attend and hadn't heard about the cake. So, am I the jerk? Absolutely not. Very simple one here. And to be honest, I'm kind of just getting a bit angry thinking about this. If your sister has gone through all that trouble to really politely say, look guys, you're our good friends. We do not want your children here. It's my wedding. It's our day. I've made this decision. Yeah, it sucks for you because your kids can't be here, but I've made this decision on one of the most important days of my life. Do not bring your kids. And she said this in a lovely way. And then four different families bring their children. How angry would you be? Especially given the fact that they then seem to ruin the event. I mean, the handprint on the cake, the cupcakes on the floor. It just sounds devastating. It's a real shame. So I completely get why you did what you did. And, and you do not want these people there. It's as simple as that. Ultimately, it's your wedding day. You decide who goes. And now for our final Am I the Jerk post of this episode. Am I the jerk for telling her to get over herself? I got a dog two years ago, a corgi, and she's very much so my sidekick. I've been with my fiance for five years. My fiance does like the dog, but she is currently pregnant and experiencing massive migraines and has been snapping at everything. So every morning when I get up, I find my fiance already awake and at the table relaxing. As soon as I get out of bed, my dog goes nuts. It's like super energy where she's running side ways barking up a storm jumping from the bed to the floor a million times causing the apartment to shake because it's old as anything etc and i'll just sit there and sing made up songs to her and just screw around with her it's pretty noisy and i can be loud it's just my way of interacting with my pets i also have adhd so i'm fully aware that i can be ridiculously loud and sometimes i simply forget to tone it down my fiance has complained about it a few times and i will absolutely try to tone it down for a while but as screwed up as it sounds the second she stops complaining and it's out of sight out of of mind i start doing it again 
If I catch myself, I apologize immediately, but sometimes I don't even catch myself doing it. So she's been getting up earlier than normal because she says she needs peace and quiet away from you and the dog because she can't hear herself think when we get up. And then she starts getting migraines and being overall annoyed. But now she's complaining because I can sense her not in the bed anymore, probably after 20 minutes of her being gone and her warmth no longer being there. And then I'm wide awake and the dog senses it and you know. So she's now getting angry because she thinks I'm purposely not letting her have space and purposely annoying her with my behaviors. I'm not, truly, but it seems like it, I guess. I've tried just laying in bed for a while so she can relax, but I get stir crazy. And I also don't feel like I should have to stay in bed so she can be alone when I live here too. But she flipped this morning. I felt her sneaking out of bed this morning at 5 a.m. and tiptoe out of the room. I watched her sit at the table with her book. Well, the dog saw me awake and immediately goes ballistic, jumping on the bed, whining, barking, etc. She comes in and says, Will you guys calm down so I can have time to myself for once? I just side-eyed her because I'm getting annoyed at this point with her demands. She says, well, I tell her to get over herself. Just because she's pregnant doesn't mean I have to change who I am or change how the household works or change my dynamic with my dog. She immediately left after telling me to go screw myself and won't answer my calls. She's been gone for six hours. Well then, a very interesting one to end, I've got to say, because up until that last little point, I genuinely didn't think that you were necessarily being a massive jerk, OP. It felt to me more like just a kind of conflict of character, and I was questioning more whether you two should be together in the first place, which, when you have a baby on the way, is a pretty crazy thing to say, but but uh, yeah, that was the opinion that I was kind of leaning towards. But after seeing what you said at the end, you're definitely the jerk. Like, you just didn't need to say any of that. Are you joking? You wouldn't change how you are or how you live because of your pregnancy girlfriend wife whoever she is that is very selfish surely when somebody is pregnant you have to concede some things and probably yeah not be as crazy loud around them give them their time etc whatever they want really <laughs> it's a bit weird to say that but overall i would say the main thing is you guys just don't really seem that compatible you just seem completely different maybe it worked for you before and maybe it will work for you again in the future but you need to find some sort of resolution and definitely Give her the credit she deserves and favor her, especially during this time when she's pregnant. Like, are you nuts? Actually, to be honest, the more I think about it, the more that you really could do so much about this. Like, surely get up and then just leave the house. Go on a very long walk with your dog. Like, if you really cared and you were less selfish, you would find so many ways to get around this. And you could find a very easy solution to come to, which would enable your girlfriend, your wife to, to have the time to herself and you to go and be loud and be crazy and your dog to go and you know exercise surely that's the solution train your dog go on a dog walk i don't know am i the jerk for leaving my babies inside by themselves i am a 20 year old mother of triplets who are only two months old i never expected ever in my life that i would be a mother to triplets so when i first became pregnant it was definitely the last thing on my mind i'm home with my babies all day long and i had to even transfer my education to online sometimes i just need some fresh air especially when i can't get them to stop crying and i find myself getting super frustrated to the point of tears it's honestly so hard and the dad isn't here to help as he's either at work or at school my fiance's parents rented us a main floor apartment so when i step outside I'm literally just sitting on the chair right beside the door Plus I have a baby monitor set up in their room and it has a camera on it I can literally see them and hear them So if anything happened, i'd be able to quickly get to them being able to step outside for a few minutes to take a breather Is really important to me because I start to have mini panic attacks when I can't get them to stop crying And I get really frustrated because I just feel super overwhelmed being able to go outside just gives me a chance to calm down. My fiance came home to me sitting outside while the babies were crying and freaked out on me, calling me a horrible mum and a bunch of other names that I'm not gonna list here. He thinks that I was being super neglectful and putting the babies in harm's way. And he even told his parents. And now everyone seems to be really against me. I grew up in the system. My fiance's family is the only family I've ever known. So it breaks my heart that they're so upset with me. But I really don't think I was doing anything wrong or putting my babies in harm's way. But they seem to think otherwise. So here I am wondering if I should apologize for my actions or if I'm the jerk in this situation. Okay, strong start. For me, no, you're not the jerk here. I kind of get it from your husband's perspective a little bit, but you have to be able to have at least one or two minutes rest. You can't just look after your children 24-7, like be in the same room as them 24-7 is what I'm trying to say. The truth is, you still got them on the baby monitor. You're right outside in case anything was to happen. Being in the room or being outside looking on a monitor doesn't really change anything. And as you've said, it's very important for your anxiety. You're having mini panic attacks. You need to sort something out. It's a lot of stress and you have a few minutes rest. 
that's okay with me am i the jerk for wanting hot food yesterday i went ice skating with my girlfriend tuesday is one of her days for dinner so she made chicken salad when i saw the chicken salad i admit i made a face she was like what what's the problem i said that we were outside in the cold all afternoon and i wasn't really in the mood for cold food she said we're inside the heat is set to 74 and we're both wearing warm dry clothes so it's plenty warm enough to eat salad i said sure but i just wanted something warm to heat me up on the inside she said that was ridiculous because my internal temperature is in the 90s and my insides are plenty hot at this point we were going in circles so i said i was just going to heat up some soup and told her to go ahead and start eating and i'll be back in a few minutes when i came out of the kitchen with my soup she was clearly upset and she asked how i would feel if she refused to eat what i made tomorrow which is today i said i wouldn't care and she said that was bs because it's rude to turn your nose up as something someone made for you so was i the jerk for not wanting cold salad after being cold all day yeah your girlfriend is completely right like she's absolutely correct if she did the same thing to you you would be very annoyed it's just a fact and you saying that you wouldn't care is bs she is correct once again it doesn't matter what she makes and it doesn't matter what you really like to be honest the fact that she's spent time making you food and you just throw it back in her face and do your own thing yeah it's very rude and you are the jerk simple as that am i the jerk for moving my son into a rental apartment after finding out that his dad's been cancelling his job applications my son aiden who is 23 moved back in with us upon graduating college as my husband wanted. My husband's original plan was to have Aiden live with us for free, but stay home and help with his disabled younger brother, who is 16. Aiden started complaining about needing money and wanted to find a job. My husband was against this and even offered to double his allowance, but Aiden was growing tired of staying at home. So he began looking for jobs here and there for over a year, but none of his job applications came through. He just applied and they never got back to him. We were confused by this until recently. I found out that my husband was behind all the job applications being cancelled. He'd wait until Aiden applied, then he'd proceed to cancel the application by impersonating him and using his email. I blew up at him at this, but his justification is that he's just trying to make sure that our younger son is cared for by Aiden. And he said that Aiden has been a big help and him getting a job will affect his care for his brother. I went ahead and rented an apartment for Aiden and told him to stay there until he finds a job and starts paying for it himself. Aiden was hurt upon knowing what his dad did. My husband was livid when he found out. He called me unhinged and said that I was separating the boys and teaching Aiden to become selfish and care more about a job than family. He also said it was a huge decision for me to rent an apartment without even running it with him. He's been giving me hell about it and is calling me a terrible mother for encouraging Aiden to be selfish and self-centered. He said I needed to see and understand why he did what he did. To be honest, I don't even want to answer the question of are you the jerk here, really? Because the main thing is, your husband is very weird. Aiden's dad, that is. What's he doing? Seriously, what's he doing? Does he really think it's worth jeopardizing the future of one of his sons just for the other one? I get it. The 16-year-old is going to take a lot more care and obviously, you know, attention than the 23-year-old. But that shouldn't mean that you force a 23-year-old to not live their life just to look after his younger brother. The fact is, he's been doing it for a long time anyway. He's 23 now. He needs to go and live his own life. And ultimately, a 16-year-old has two parents that can look after him, I'm sure. I don't think you should force Aiden to not move out, not get a job. Simple as that. Am I the jerk for pulling my pants down and showing my husband my underwear after he insisted that I was on my period when I wasn't? My husband has a bad habit of blaming my behavior or reactions on my period. For example, when we argue, he'd say, I won't argue anymore since you tend to act crazy when you're on your period. Or even say, I know you didn't mean to do or say that, but couldn't help it since it's that time of the month for you. It's so irritating and it prevents me from being allowed to express myself. It happened again last night at the dinner table. We had an argument about him forgetting to fill my car with gas after he used it. And when I expressed my frustration, he said, we're not going to talk about this now since you appear to be on your period. I said that I was not on my period and that this was just me feeling frustrated with him. But he insisted that he won't talk about this then and insisted he won't hear what I had to say since you must be on your period since you're being irrational during this argument. I snapped. I'd had enough. So I got up, stood in front of him while he was still eating and pulled down my pants to show him my underwear. He made a grossed out face and shouted, Frick, that's nasty. I'm eating my dang dinner. We had a full-blown argument and he said I acted horribly and ruined his appetite by putting that nasty move. He told me to grow up and stop being spiteful over nothing. He keeps saying I grossed him out during dinner and made him go to bed hungry. So, am I the jerk? Did I overreact? Once again, I'm not entirely sure what's going on in this episode, but we just seem to have a lot of strange men. Maybe that's men in general. What can I say? Uh, But in all seriousness... This guy's very weird. Doesn't even matter if you're the jerk or not in this spot. Get rid of him. Like the weirdest guy ever. I don't understand. Like, how do you actually marry someone? 
that says, oh, I can't have an argument with you because you're on your period. But if I was a girl, I wouldn't marry someone who said that. I'd be like, I wouldn't even, they wouldn't even be my boyfriend or girl. Like, you know, I just wouldn't be with them. You know, maybe he's great in bed. I don't know. Just seems very odd and I would definitely sack him off. Am I the jerk for showing up to my husband's doctor's appointment? My husband has been dealing with some health issues the past few weeks and has been frequently visiting the doctor. I asked if I could go with him, but he refused, saying it wouldn't be necessary. When I asked why he wouldn't want me with him, he said he felt more comfortable having privacy with his doctor. I jokingly asked if his doctor was a woman and he glanced at me. I anticipated his next doctor's appointment and decided to go and meet him there. He went and 10 minutes later, I entered the office. I identified myself as his wife and he was shocked when he saw me. I greeted his doctor, a man, lol, and we talked, but my husband refused to even look my way and refused to speak as well. We left the office together and he went off on me in the car, saying I shouldn't have followed him and came into the doctor's office after he asked me for some privacy. I said it was all right. I'm his wife. I already know what his issues are and I just wanted to show support. He said I overstepped his one boundary and refused to respect his wish and made him more stressed than he already is in these hard times that he's going through. I thought he overreacted, but am I the jerk? Finally, a woman in the wrong. It's good to see because I was getting a little bit worried there about all the men doing terrible things. The one thing that your husband has said to you is please do not come to my doctor's appointments. And also your health is literally the most private thing, right? And I get it. He's your husband, but he's genuinely said to you this one thing I would like to do privately and you've disrespected him. So yes, you're the jerk. Like, what are you even going there for? I don't really understand. Like, what's the point? Just you said afterwards that you speak to him about it and you know what the issue is. So if you know what the issue is, why are you then going to the doctor's appointment to speak to his doctor? It just sounds like you're very insecure, to be honest, because you're saying, oh, is the doctor a girl? I mean, maybe that's the main reason because your husband's telling everything anyway. Very odd behavior. You're the jerk. Am I the jerk for prioritizing my son's dog over my wife's pregnancy. When my son, who is now 14, was eight years old, we got a dog. He's half Great Dane and half some dog my friend's dog met during an unauthorized absence. My son loves this dog and does all the care for him, except vet stuff, and is a very responsible dog owner. This dog is pretty much his best friend. My wife is 12 weeks pregnant, and ever since we confirmed the pregnancy, she's been acting weird around the dog. She avoids him, puts her hand over her stomach when he's around, and jolts whenever he makes noise. Today, she told me she wants to rehome the dog. I asked her what she was talking about. She said she's been having anxiety that he will jump on her. This is completely unreasonable. He doesn't jump on people. We train him not to jump on people or run into people very young because he's half Great Dane. And I felt this was important for all dogs, but especially one who could possibly grow to such a large size, which he did. There is no reason for her to think the dog will jump on her. She said there's no way to know for sure that the dog won't jump on her. And if he does, our baby could be hurt. This dog has never so much as growled at her. She said that even if the dog doesn't jump on her, her anxiety about it is bad for her health. She said she needs the dog elsewhere for her safety and the babies. I told her that there was no way. My son got this dog right after he lost his mum and imprinted on him hard. Sometimes I think he loves the dog more than me. I'm not taking his dog. The dog didn't do anything. My wife said that I am prioritizing the dog over her pregnancy. The dog isn't a threat to her pregnancy. If this were any other unreasonable request, I would do it just because she's pregnant. I just can't break my son's heart over a fear she has that makes no sense. So am I being a jerk? Now, I think the title of this one, Am I the Jerk for Prioritizing My Son's Dog Over My Wife's Pregnancy, is a little bit, you know, cheeky because it sounds way worse than it actually is. You're not really prioritizing your son's dog over your wife's pregnancy. Yes, in, in literal senses you are, but in reality, you're prioritizing your son and the amazing bond that he has with this dog, your dog, who is your best friend, the dog who's done nothing wrong over your wife's pregnancy. And that's a difference. Look, for your wife, fair enough. I I get it. Maybe she has just got a little bit anxious because there's a dog roaming around and she's pregnant. And that is absolutely completely fair, by the way. For me, it doesn't necessarily even matter if the dog has never done anything like that in the past before, because you said like, yeah, it is unreasonable to think that they will do that. But unreasonable thoughts are sometimes justified. And if it's going to make her more comfortable, I get why she's thinking that way. I don't know about rehoming though. That seems very unfair. However, what I will say is that she is jeopardizing your son and his future and his mental well-being. Now, does she think that's fair? Because I certainly don't. And if it's all right, realistically as it is, then there's no reason to change anything. You've got to think of the damage that that could do to your son if you were to take away his best friend. Uh, You know what? I've actually just seen a great point in the comments, by the way. Not the jerk. Has she stopped driving? Has she started using a wheelchair so she won't fall? Is she refusing to use the stairs? If you kind of get what this comment is saying, is she doing lots of other things to protect the baby? No, 
it's very unlikely. So why has she just changed her mind on the dog? I don't know. Maybe something's gone wrong there. Again, I genuinely don't mind her thinking this way because look, she's pregnant. She's literally raising a child inside of her. If you want to, you know, take precautions, fine. But it is weird that she's just having this one thing about the dog and seemingly nothing else in her life. Am I the jerk for calling my boyfriend dumb for boiling salmon? So this happened yesterday. I came home from work in the evening and saw something cooking on the stove. I asked my boyfriend and he said he was boiling salmon. I was taken aback, like completely. I asked him to repeat what he said and he so casually said it again. I was like, ooh, who boils salmon? He made a face and didn't reply. I told him it wasn't right and that I'd never heard of salmon being boiled, like egg and water type of boiling. He said it was all right and he likes it cooked that way. I called him dumb for this, to which he reacted by snapping and saying, who the frick says I can't boil salmon? I said, um, common sense? He replied, screw common sense. I bet it's no longer common sense to eat an apple from an apple tree in this time and age. We had an argument and he started ignoring me, saying he felt hurt and disrespected when I called him dumb and is now waiting for an apology. So, am I the jerk? Now look, as you can probably tell by looking at me or listening to me, I am a very very accomplished chef let's just say that and even i would never boil salmon how stupid is that said no one ever like who cares you know who actually cares how you cook salmon i don't know if you can boil salmon i haven't done it personally however if it actually cooks the food and it's edible then you can do it maybe it doesn't taste great i don't know any budding chefs in the comments let me know for me i don't know why you'd even care like why why do you care that a salmon's being boiled if it tastes nice it tastes nice Simple as that. Would I be the jerk if I didn't let my husband attend the baby shower or birth of our child? My husband and I have a three-year-old daughter. He was happy when I told him she was a girl. We're having another and when I had my ultrasound, I was told it was another girl. Again, my husband was happy. It turns out though that I was told wrong and it's actually a boy we're having and my husband has now freaked out in excitement. His reaction to us having a boy was nothing like either of his reactions to having a girl. He was actually jumping around and yelling. He immediately called all his friends and family. He kept hugging and swinging our daughter around telling her she's getting a brother. I confronted him about not being this excited about having girls. And he said, because I wanted a boy. I got so angry. I don't want him at the baby shower. I guess it's not really a baby shower as we're not asking for anything, but still, or the birth. He thought I was kidding at first, but once he realized I was serious, he got really upset and started an argument over it. So would I be the jerk if I didn't let him attend the baby shower or birth? Well then, I think we've come to our most unreasonable jerk of this episode so far. You can't come to the birth of our baby because you showed excitement at its gender. Does that make any sense? Now, I would understand it if he'd been very disappointed at having a girl and was always like, oh, I wanted a boy. I didn't want a girl in the first place, etc., etc." However, having a preference between a boy and a girl, I think is completely fine. Like, let's be honest, it's natural. You're probably going to lean one way or the other. Like, if we're being completely honest, if you really thought about it, you're probably like, uh, I don't really mind, but maybe 51% a boy, maybe 51% a girl. You know, up to you. However, he loves your daughter. He was very happy at having another girl, but a little bit more happy at having a boy. He's already got a girl as well. Remember that. So maybe that makes a difference. I don't know. I mean, I'm so excited. I've just, I've just chinned my mic. Get me an invite to the baby shower. That's all I'll say. Am I the jerk for showing up at my ex's wedding in a pretty dress? My ex and I had a peaceful divorce. We co-parent our three children together and there haven't really been many issues. My ex is getting married to stephanie i like stephanie she's been great with my kids and makes my ex happy my ex invited me to their wedding and i was happy for him it was my day with the kids so it made sense for me to come was his reasoning when i arrived at the wedding though stephanie thanked me for dropping the kids off and then brushed me off we'd never had any issues before i explained that i was going to stay for the reception and she was very upset I was confused because I assumed she knew I'd be in attendance. It turned out she didn't consider that I'd actually accept the invitation. I told her that I was invited, and since I took the two-hour drive, I'd be staying for the entire duration. She didn't like this response. Stephanie asked me to leave, and I stood my ground. She went on to complain about my dress upstaging hers. My ex and former mother-in-law helped her to calm down, and the wedding shortly began. I thought that was the end of it, but later in private, Stephanie accused me of trying to ruin her special day. She's convinced that I wanted to show off and make the wedding about my divorce. She said it was rude for me to not leave after the bride requested it because it was her special day. I told her that I'm not responsible for her insecurities and once again reminded her that I have no interest in stealing my ex back. Am I the jerk for getting up from my chair in the middle of Christmas dinner and shouting, shut the F up about my body in response to my husband's observation? 
So, ever since I had my son months ago, my husband has started making indirect comments about my body. He never says any hurtful words, but I find his observations, as he calls it, hurtful. For example, he'd see me wearing an old top and say, oh, that top used to look good on you, but not anymore though. Or when he looks at my waist and says, wow, didn't know your waist could get this wide. Basically, passive stuff that I try to ignore till it extended to friends and family. FYI, this went on for months and months and months. We went to Christmas celebration at his family's home. My sister-in-law complimented my floral maxi dress and my husband said, I agree, it looks nice on you. Though I have to admit that your waist could get smaller than this. Awkward silence took over. I was absolutely fuming and this was my last straw. So I got up from my chair in the middle of dinner and shouted at the top of my lungs, shut the F up about my body. He was absolutely speechless as his family stared while some others tried to get me to calm down. But the situation got more tense and dinner ended up being cut short. And my husband stormed off to his friend's place to spend the night upon leaving a very nasty text saying I embarrassed him and made a scene over an observation he made. He called me childish and told me to get therapy for my insecurity instead of verbally abusing him and scaring his family. Now I feel like an absolute idiot jerk and like I ruined Christmas for him and everybody with my oversensitivity. So, am I in the wrong? Well, first thing to say is it's very clear that you're not the jerk in this story. Are you mad? And secondly, these are not observations from your husband. They're not even passive aggressive. They're just horrible insults. To me, this guy just seems emotionally abusive. He probably knows exactly what he's doing and is trying to put you down for whatever reason. And it's just a disgusting man. Why are you with him? Am I the jerk for silently getting up and walking out of the restaurant during New Year's Eve dinner after I was told to pay for everyone at the table by my in-laws? I am a 32-year-old woman and I recently inherited a good amount of money from my mum. I keep the money in a separate account as I still haven't decided what to do with it and I didn't want it to go to waste. I noticed my husband constantly bringing up the inheritance money and making countless suggestions as to how I should spend it. Another thing is that he expects me to pay for nearly everything the past couple of weeks. For New Year's Eve, my husband and I met up with his family at a restaurant to celebrate. It was going fine until I found out that I was expected to pay for everyone at the table. My husband's mum joked about paying for dinner out of my inheritance pocket, which made me livid, but I showed no reaction, just silently paid for my own food and drinks. Then I got up and made my way out of the restaurant restaurant they were shouting after me like a crowd and my husband tried to get me to come back but i drove home he got back at 3 a.m yelling at me saying i was pathetic to get up and walk out on him and his family after they relied on me to pay for their food and thought i was gracious enough to do it but they were wrong. He said I humiliated him and the family and that what I did was an attempt to get back at them for not being able to help mum when she was sick. Not true is all I'm gonna say. He is mad and saying that I caused a huge rift between his family and me when it wouldn't have hurt me to pay for the celebratory dinner. So, am I the jerk? Again, like the first story, you're obviously not in the wrong here. It's your money, it's your inheritance. And once again, your husband and his family are very, very strange. Let me get this straight. Your mum dies from an illness and the thing that your in-laws and your husband say is, great, now you can take us to dinner and spend money on us. That is just weird. Am I the jerk for telling my parents that they ruined New Year's celebration after they kicked my husband out over a joke? I've been married to my second husband, Mike, for four years now. He's a jokester and loves to crack jokes all the time. He especially likes a joke with my brother, Ethan, and his wife. Ethan used to be okay with it until he started complaining about Mike taking it too far with his jokes. Some context about Ethan. He and his wife couldn't have kids, so they adopted a boy, Joey, two years ago. Mike has been making silly, lighthearted jokes involving Joey's bio parents as a way to mess with Ethan and his wife. I already talked to Mike, and let me tell you, he 100% means no harm and is just trying to get them to react. So, fast forward to New Year's Eve. My parents hosted a big celebratory dinner and Ethan and his wife came. While we were eating dinner, Mike decided to tell a knock-knock joke to Ethan. He said, knock-knock. Ethan laughed and said, who's there? Mike replied, Joey's bio parents, then burst out laughing. Sorry, I've got to just interrupt here. That has to be one of the worst jokes that I've ever heard in my entire life. How How is that funny? <laughs> Seriously. I mean, to be fair, it's got me laughing, but that's just because it's so stupid. Silence took over and Ethan's facial expressions changed. His wife called Mike an idiot, to which Mike replied with, Hey, relax. It was just a joke. An argument ensued and dinner was paused. 
My parents suddenly told Mike to leave, which I thought was too harsh. I tried to speak to them and get them to calm down, but mum insisted that Mike leave. We left and Mike was complaining the whole time about how they overreacted. I called mum later and she told me Mike was out of line with his hurtful jokes about this touchy topic and told me that I was wrong for defending him and saying he was just joking. She said he ruined New Year's for the family, but I told her it was her and dad who ruined the celebrations for escalating the situation and kicking him out. I told her he could talk to them, but again, they were the ones who ruined New Year's celebration. She called me delusional for the statement and hung up. We haven't talked to them for days. I tried contacting Ethan, but no response. It's kind of like when someone says a really terrible offensive joke and then says no offense at the end and then they think it's okay because they've added the no offense. Except in this story, there was no offense at the end. It was just honestly one of the worst jokes I've ever heard. Like where is the humor in that? I know I said it halfway through, but honestly, (laughs) what part of that is funny? It's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, it's pretty obvious to say this, but yeah, just because you find something funny doesn't mean it's not offending someone else. It's not about how you find the joke you're telling. It's about, you know, if the person you're telling it to finds it funny. It's so weird. Genuinely the worst joke I've probably ever heard. And yeah, needless to say in this story, your husband is obviously the jerk and so are you for defending him. Am I the jerk for putting parental controls on my TV and royally angering my father-in-law? I live with my wife. We have two kids, an eight-year-old boy and a six-year-old girl. My wife's parents are staying with us temporarily as their home is having some serious repairs after a freak accident. It wasn't their fault and luckily they had insurance. The repairs should be completed in two months from now. I don't really get along with my in-laws, especially my father-in-law, but I agreed to let them stay because I thought the time would fly by and it wouldn't be that bad. But I'm posting here, so I guess I was wrong. My mother-in-law doesn't have a job, and my father-in-law works late shifts until around 11 p.m. When he gets home, they'll watch YouTube in the living room and play music at a loud volume with our speaker system. It's not college house party bass tearing apart the walls loud, but it's still loud. My kids are not light sleepers, but this wakes them up. Then they go wake me up because they want me to make it stop. My kids need to be rested for school, and I need to get up in the morning to drop them off and go to work. My wife works overnight shifts, so she doesn't witness this. I've tried to talk to my mother and father-in-law about it and ask that they please keep the noise down after my kids' bedtime, which is half past eight. I don't expect complete silence, but I really don't think they need to have the TV on loud late at night. My father-in-law argued with me and said that he doesn't finish work until 11 p.m., so I'm basically expecting him not to do the things that he enjoys after work. I told him he can do it before work or on his days off, or it's tough. He complained to my wife, who's now taking his side and saying that the kids need to learn how to sleep through a bit of everyday noise. I told her it's not everyday noise and that he and my mother-in-law are being excessively noisy and inconsiderate. She's just not there to see it. My father-in-law has been sending me links to buy earplugs for the kids. I've gotten really fed up with this. It's not my in-law's house and they're staying with us as guests and I think they're being really selfish. I decided to put parental controls on the TV so that my in-laws can't use it after half past eight until 6 a.m. the next day. Between those times, the TV cannot be used without putting in the password and only I know it. This doesn't affect my wife as she doesn't get off work until 6 a.m. and isn't normally home until 6.20 ish. My father-in-law is now incredibly angry with me and said that I'm acting like a child and keeps pestering me, demanding the password. My wife is also mad at me for upsetting her dad. I'm just so annoyed at this whole situation and I'm sick of hearing about it. So I just want to know if I'm morally in the clear. OP, of course you're in the clear. As you said right from the beginning, it's your house. And that is as simple as it gets. They are guests in your home. I don't care if they are in-laws or not. They are still guests in your home and therefore they have to respect your rules. Saying that the kids should just get earplugs or sleep through a little bit of noise is crazy. Like that is ridiculous. I get it, a little bit of chat here and there is all right. The TV on a very low volume, fair enough. But it is 11 o'clock on a school night for your kids in their home. That's not really fair. Ultimately, if they don't like the rules that you've set in your own house and they can go and stay in a motel or something, like there's no need for them to be there, especially given that you're giving them the house for free, right? They're staying with you, I presume, for free. It's strange that your wife is backing them up this much when her own children are being affected by this. Overall, get them gone. You are not the jerk. Am I the jerk for snitching and causing my friend to lose her scholarship, dream college acceptance? I, a 19 year old woman, am a sophomore in college and I have a friend, Tia, who is in high school and applying for colleges and scholarships. I helped her throughout the college process and she ended up getting in early action to her top college and she got a full scholarship. I was happy for her until recently. I was talking to a mutual friend of ours and she started gushing about how Tia's essay was so heartfelt and beautiful. I asked to see it because I thought she'd just forgotten to show me. She showed me many of her essay drafts. 
but as I was reading it, I was completely taken aback. This essay was one of my college essay drafts, which I'd shown to Tia for reference on writing techniques only. I made this clear. I was livid. The essay was really personal and she barely even tweaked it up. It was almost entirely copied and pasted. I trusted her with it and this is what she did. In a fit of rage, I gathered all the evidence of me helping her with the college process, including evidence of me sending the specific essay to her and I showed it to the school. She not only lost her scholarship, but she also lost her seat at the school. Now people are calling me dramatic and shaming me for robbing her of her education. She's the only person in her family to get into college and receive an academic and athletic scholarship, so everyone was rooting for her, including me at one time. And while I didn't expect the outcome to be so severe, it was. Right now, I feel bad. I feel terrible. I feel like she took advantage of me, but I didn't want to be the cause of something so horrible. I did myself a justice, but at the cost of someone's dreams. Now I'm wondering if what I did was justified or not. So, am I the jerk? Now this one I think is actually quite a tough one. The easy answer here is just to quickly say, no, of course you're not. You're, you're in the right. She stole your essay. You trusted her and she betrayed your trust. She deserves all the punishment in the world. And I get that. I really do. However, does the punishment of her completely losing her dream spot, her scholarship, her education, etc., really justify the crime of copying one essay? I'm not entirely sure that it does. For me, it depends on the other stuff that she did. Was that all copied as well? How heavily was that referenced? How much was it her own work? Because if it was just this one essay that she copied, yes, for you op i understand that's a horrible situation and it would feel terrible and of course you need there to be some repercussions for your own sake but if it was just that one this does seem a little bit too far to me and of course you could never have known that this was going to happen and she was going to be kicked out so fair enough if you wanted to go ahead and do what you did i do get that from your personal point of view it just seems a little bit harsh for me. That's all. I mean, look, I'm not surprised. I'm just reading through the comments here. And the majority are saying that OP is not the jerk and that she plagiarized and, you know, you can't do that to get into college, et cetera, et cetera. It all makes sense to me. It does. I just think, come on, everyone's copied at some point, haven't they? Let's be honest with each other. Everyone's done it. It's only one thing. Is it really that bad? Am I the jerk for not defending my boyfriend when my brother asked him to leave? My boyfriend, Ryan, likes to help others. He's the type of guy who would give a coworker money for their rent or buy groceries for our neighbor. However, he can take it too far at times. He often tries to help people without asking if they need or want his help. Every year, my brother Paul and his wife, Lily, host a holiday dinner. This year, Ryan attended for the first time. Before we left for their house, I told Ryan that Lily was legally blind and had been her entire life. She knew what she could and could not do. I told Ryan to only help Lily if she asked for help. We arrived early so I could help Paul and Lily cook. While we were cooking, Ryan kept telling Lily things like, Lily, if you're looking for the soul, it's to your right. Or, Lily, don't put that there. It's too close to the edge. Lily and Paul both told him that while his commentary was somewhat helpful, it was completely unnecessary. Still, Ryan did not stop. However, things became tense when Lily went to go and chop vegetables. When she pulled out a knife, Ryan stopped her and asked if he could take over because he didn't want Lily to hurt herself. Lily said she'd be fine, but Ryan insisted that she give him the knife. Finally, Paul got annoyed and told Ryan to stop. Ryan did stop, but he kept hovering over Lily while she was chopping. I asked Ryan to sit down until dinner was ready, but Ryan insisted that he just wanted to help. Finally, Lily asked him and I to help set the table and greet people arriving. We did, but things were still tense. I did pull Ryan to the side and reminded him again to only help Lily if she asked for it. He agreed, but I could tell that he was still upset. Everything finally boiled over after dinner. My nieces, who are five and three years old, have a game they love to play with their mother. They will hand Lily something and Lily would have to guess what it is. Lily would sometimes make a couple of clearly outrageous guesses, like saying an egg is an elephant or a shoe to make her daughters laugh. After dinner, the eldest handed Lily the salt shaker. When Lily guessed it was a phone, Ryan piped up and said it was a salt shaker. Lily laughed it off and explained the game to Ryan, but I could see that she was annoyed. My niece then handed Lily a coin. When Lily guessed incorrectly, Ryan loudly told Lily it was a coin. This was apparently the last straw for Paul. Paul demanded that Ryan leave since he clearly couldn't respect Lily. Ryan insisted that he was trying to be helpful. However, Lily said it was probably best if Ryan and I left. I quickly gathered up our things and managed to convince Ryan to leave. Ryan is currently angry at me. He said I should have defended him, especially since I knew he was only being helpful. He also insisted that I should have stood up against Paul's overreaction. Those are Ryan's words. I'm now wondering if I should have defended Ryan. So, am I the jerk? No, you're definitely not in the wrong, but I would say that the thing that you are wrong about is calling Ryan helpful in the first place. 
I don't think this is helpful at all. This is the opposite of helpful. If you get someone that is so helpful that they do things that are just not helpful at all, and if anything are actually really offensive to someone else, then that is not helpful. And even when they're told multiple times to stop doing something and they continue to do it, then that is the opposite of helpful. That's not being too helpful. That is being unhelpful. I'm not sure what's going on here with Ryan and his personality, but I feel like he knows what he's doing, right? You can't be too helpful to the extent that you keep trying to do something and help out when you're being explicitly told to stop doing that. That doesn't make any sense to me. Like, he sounds insufferable, right? He wasn't being nice at any point during this. I mean, maybe at the start, fine, when he didn't get it. And even though you told him about Lily being blind and being okay with what she can and can't do, fine, give him a little bit of leeway. After you tell him, he just becomes super patronizing. And I completely agree with Paul. Get him gone, because Lily was clearly getting annoyed, and it was just ruining the entire experience. Am I the jerk for laughing at my niece's gifts? My 12-year-old niece is really into arts and crafts, and recently got into crocheting. Before Christmas, she told me that she had a surprise gift for me, and seemed really excited about it. I told her I was really looking forward to it as well, and I prepared her gift myself, which was actually art supplies. On Christmas, when we had our family gathering, she brought me her gift and was super excited for me to open it when i opened it i saw a crocheted animal but if i'm being honest it looked really really bad to give you an idea of what it looked like imagine something from r slash bad taxidermy but in crochet form i couldn't help but burst out laughing and i couldn't stop laughing no matter how hard i tried to suppress it so I had to excuse myself to go to the washroom where I locked myself for nearly 10 minutes. When I came out, my niece was in tears with her parents trying to console her. And I apologized profusely and told her that I really liked her gift, but she kept crying and shouting at me, calling me a liar and that she sucked at art. My niece avoided me for the vast majority of the party after that. I tried to make her feel better by displaying her gift on my living room cabinet, but my wife pulled me aside later in the day and told me to take it down after the party because it was, in her words, really ugly and made her uncomfortable surprisingly all the adults were very understanding of my situation but i feel really bad because i feel like i destroyed my niece's confidence and i'm not sure how i can make it up to her yeah you should feel bad and yeah you did destroy her confidence i don't think that any sane person in that situation would laugh especially not for 10 minutes if you can see the joy and excitement in a young person's face about giving you literally anything let alone something that they've spent hard graft and time working on for you even if it's completely so embarrassingly awful you don't laugh you say wow that's amazing you accept it and then maybe you joke about it later with the adults if you really want to but you don't laugh right then and there in their face about something that they've gifted you that is shocking form am i the jerk for not allowing my daughter to spend christmas with me and my new family I am a 46-year-old mother of a 24-year-old woman from my first marriage and 12 and 10-year-old boys from my second marriage. When I was married to my first husband, he was unemployed almost all our marriage. We lived in his house that his father owned. His father paid our bills. He bought us the car we drove. He sent my husband money to take care of our family, etc. I was young, stupid, and in love. That is my only excuse for living like that. When my daughter turned five, I started pushing my husband to work and I myself got a job. He didn't want to. Things escalated and ended up in us getting divorced. He got full custody while I got visitations every other Saturday. His dad hired a good lawyer. I couldn't do that. I also had to pay child support. I used to work a full-time and two part-time jobs to afford my one-bedroom apartment as well as the child support payments. A year after our divorce, my ex married a new woman. There was a lot of child alienation from them and sadly, I couldn't afford to take them to court again. By the time my daughter turned 14, she was calling me by name and calling her stepmom, mum. I tried my best to hold on to my kid. I went to all the events I could go to. I planned fun days with the limited funds I had. Even when I couldn't afford to turn on the heat, I still made sure to get her a Christmas gift. Sadly, by the time she turned 16, she no longer wanted to have anything to do with me. I took them to court, but they did nothing. And the last time I saw her, she said some very awful things to me. I was defeated, but I decided that I no longer had a daughter, since that is literally what she wanted. I moved away, met a good man, married him, and had two wonderful kids. Last year, my daughter reached out. She was sorry. She said that she wanted to reconnect. I was hesitant and resentful, but I still talk with her once a week. Suddenly, she asked if she could spend Christmas with us. She wanted to get to know her brothers. I told her that we were not at a stage where I could allow that. It got heated, but I told her that I could not trust her with my kids and that I was still not 100% sure that I wanted our relationship to become more. She says that I'm a jerk, that I'm punishing her for things she had no control over, that I know what she told me and how she reacted to me was a direct result of her father's manipulation. So, am I the jerk? 
Well, never have I agreed with someone more than I agree with your daughter right now. She says you're the jerk for punishing her for things she had no control over. And yeah, I completely agree with her. It's very clear to me anyway that the way she acted throughout all those years, you know, alienating you, telling you that she wanted nothing to do with you, is directly because of her father, your ex-husband. That's clear to see. I just think it's harsh to punish a literal child, someone that, you know, was thinking those things when they were 14, 16, even younger, just because of your ex and now they've realized that that is the reason and you're still punishing them for that Yeah, I think it's time to just forget the past and try and make a new relationship with your daughter Am I the jerk for throwing away the expensive whiskey my brother got me for my 40th? I am a 40 year old man and I just turned 40 last week I'm divorced and have two teenage kids with my ex-wife a 17 year old boy and a 14 year old girl My whole family came to mine and my girlfriend's apartment last saturday for my birthday party my parents, some aunts and uncles, some cousins, my three brothers with their families, my two kids, and my girlfriend's 15-year-old son who lives with us. I am a recovered alcoholic. I've been sober for six years now. Alcohol absolutely ruined my life. It destroyed my marriage and nuked my relationship with my kids for years. I don't allow alcohol in my home now for anyone. It just isn't served or tolerated here. My entire family knows this very well as they know my entire history with alcohol. For my 40th, my brother bought me a very expensive bottle of whiskey. It had writing on it, a very heavy bottle and very old whiskey, so it probably cost him a couple hundred bucks. When he gave me that bottle, I was shocked and said, I don't drink, but thanks for the gift. He then opened the bottle and started pouring shots in plastic cups for everyone. My daughter had a panic attack at the smell of the alcohol, which I'm painfully aware is my fault and I will never forgive myself for it. So I told my brother to take the alcohol out on the balcony and just leave it there. He though wouldn't do it and took a shot of the whiskey. I told him to seriously stop it and he proceeded to pour the whiskey. He then said I'm acting like a sober saint now when I ruined everyone's birthdays for years with my drinking. I told him to come to the hallway with me and talk it out. He refused and put a glass of whiskey in my hand. I took the trash can, threw the whiskey bottle in it and the plastic cups and took the trash out. My brother then stormed off and my mum followed him. She later called me, demanding an apology for disrespecting my brother like that. My dad said I was being overly sensitive, and some of my other family members also agree. Am I the jerk here? Obviously not. Are you kidding me? You're giving someone who was an alcoholic and therefore is still an alcoholic, because being an alcoholic, you could never really leave that behind. You're still addicted to alcohol, even if you don't have it anymore. A bottle of whiskey for their birthday. And then saying, come on, everyone, let's do some shots. Are you mad? What's shocking here is just your entire family's reaction to this. Like, they should be saying to your brother, what are you doing? Leave immediately. Are you joking? You know how much alcohol has ruined not just OP's life, but his family's life as well. I mean, look, his daughter's just had a panic attack, for God's sake, because of the smell. That shows how incredibly impactful alcohol has been on this family. Yet you still bring it to his birthday party? Wow. Am I the jerk for not wanting my husband to go to his ex's funeral? I'll admit, I'm biased right off the bat. I couldn't stand her. I call her his ex to myself and others. He called her his friend. We're all in our early 40s and she died recently, an aneurysm. I've been with him for 10 years now, but he'd known her for 20 plus. The way he tells it, they were friends in college, decided to date, got married, and then realized they weren't a great couple and decided to just be friends. All that happened years before I met him. He was clear early on that she was important. A couple of months into dating, it came up that his friend was actually his ex-wife. He explained the above to me, saying she was one of his closest friends and that it was purely platonic. I expressed some discomfort at him being so close to an ex, and he told me, that's fine. If you have a serious issue with it, let me know now and save us some time. I'll choose her. I like you and all, but I've known her for over 12 years and she is one of the most important people in my life. You'll have to be okay with that if you want us to be a thing. When we were engaged, I asked again. He gave me this perplexed look and asked, why would us getting married affect my friendships? I sucked it up and went along. I resented every moment of knowing her, especially when we had to be social. She understood some part of him that I couldn't. Her husband was friends with mine as well, so it's not like I could use him as an angle. Oh wow, that is a horribly malicious comment, I've gotta say. He'd have lunch with the ex, they'd go to their geeky movies, and whatever. The few times I brought it up, he said, We had this conversation before, and you had your chance to back out. She died after they had lunch the other day on the way to her car. He spent a bunch of time crying, but honestly, I was relieved. He was working with her husband on funeral planning. I told him, You don't think you're going, do you? This is my argument summed up. She's dead, so she's not a factor anymore. He doesn't get to use his she's my friend excuse since she doesn't exist anymore. He had his cry for a couple of days. He gets to be done with mourning her already. There's no need for him to go to her funeral since I wouldn't want her at his 
What am I reading? He was the angriest I've ever seen him when I told him that. Replying that he'll be going no matter how I feel and that he's willing to burn this to the freaking ground while holding up his wedding band. Besides you, she was the closest friend in my life. Him, her husband, and my sisters are calling me an insensitive jerk over this, all saying that there was no romantic aspect to their relationship and that I'm heartless. Her husband went so far as calling me a ghoul for how I reacted. I never felt their relationship was appropriate, and I hid that for years because I wanted to be with my husband. Now that she's gone, I don't feel I should have to hide it anymore and can speak freely. So, am I in the wrong for just wanting him to be done with her and for him to not attend the funeral? Well, I've got to say, first of all, absolutely yes, you're in the wrong. And secondly, some of the language in here is nuts. I can't quite believe it. Don't get me wrong, I can understand how from your perspective you don't particularly like this relationship. They're exes, you know, they were married and they're still great friends and it's annoying to you. I can understand that. However, your husband is right. He's given you so many opportunities throughout your entire relationship to be like, okay, this is too much for me. I'm done with it. But you've kept going. Now, admittedly, I understand that maybe you were like, okay, I don't like this, but I love him. I'm going to keep going no matter what. And you still don't like it. That's okay. However, some of the malicious stuff that you're saying here, saying that you're glad that she's dead, that she's not a factor anymore, that he's done with his mourning over his best friend other than you, and that he now can't even go to the funeral, that's insane. Even if you hated this woman, you didn't like her relationship with your husband, I don't really care. Ultimately, she was your husband's best friend other than you, as he said, and you're saying, no, you can't go to the funeral. That is crazy. You're definitely the butthole. Am I the jerk for not letting our kids eat my wife's cooking? I am a 34-year-old man and I have a wife and we have two children, a four-year-old girl and a seven-year-old boy. I work as a manager at a care home and my wife owns a bakery with her mum. My wife cooks all the time because she is much better at cooking than I am. I cook sometimes. She is the one who takes care of the house, the kids and chores. Yesterday, when I came back from work, dinner was ready, so I plated it up for everyone while my wife was washing her hands. My kids like their food cut up. I was cutting their chicken into pieces and it looked a bit pink. I told my wife to look at it and she said, it is a little bit pink, but it's fine. I told her I'm not letting them eat this if it's pink. She told me to stop being a baby and it's not gonna kill them. I kept telling her it's pink in the middle. They shouldn't eat that. They can get food poisoning and that it's dangerous for them. She told me if you don't want them eating it, then you can cook their dinner. So I made them cheese and ham toasties. I also made her one, but she didn't eat it. She told me she isn't talking to me if I think her cooking is horrible. Now I don't think it's horrible. I just didn't want our kids eating that. I told her to stop thinking she was right. So, am I the jerk? I mean, I don't know about this one. Surely the simple solution in this isolated instance of the pink chicken is just to cook it for a little bit longer. Just say to your wife, look, I don't want to you know, be rude. You do all the cooking. You take care of the kids. I completely respect that and I'm very grateful for it. Would you mind just to satisfy my inner, you know, worries if we can just put this chicken a little bit longer? I'm sorry, but a little bit longer just so it's not as pink. You yourself have admitted it is a little bit on the pink side, even if that's not going to really, you know, harm our children. And she probably if she was a reasonable woman, would have said, okay, not ideal, but fair enough, I understand. However, you've gone down the complete wrong road, being petty, making a completely different meal, and not even letting your wife give her cooking to your children. Yeah, that's way too far, my friend. That's not the way of doing it. Now, this incident, on top of you saying that your wife is better at cooking than you, I don't know how that really works. I mean, just train, right? Practice. You can be a good cook. Like, women aren't born better cooks than men, are they? It's just, are you good at it or not? Like, practice it, my friend. Also, she takes care of the kids, and she just seems to do all the other chores. Yeah, it's not looking great for you, my friend. Are we the jerks for not giving our granddaughter the same wedding gift as our other grandchildren? First of all, this is my first post on here ever. I wanted an objective opinion and I have read a lot of these kinds of posts on Facebook. If I do anything wrong, please tell me. Oh, don't worry, I will. I am a woman in my 70s and I'm the grandmother to five wonderful grandkids, three women and two men. The last of my grandkids got married last October. My husband and I usually get them a small gift, usually the cheapest thing on the registry. Then the day before the wedding, we privately give them a check for $40,000. We prefer that they use it for a house, but we don't force them to do so. We also ask them to keep it private. We have a big extended family and we don't want them to expect it from us. They all honored this request. When it came to our youngest granddaughter, we bought her an air fryer. That was the cheapest thing on the registry and sent it in advance. Then she called us furious. She went off on us for being cheap and how she knew we had money, but that we didn't love her enough to show it by getting her something more expensive. We were horrified by her behavior. Then she went ahead and threatened to disinvite us if we didn't get her a better gift. 
We discussed it, bought her a china set, but we did not give her the money that was set aside for her. We decided that she did not deserve it. Fast forward to last week. She met up with her brother. They got to talking and she found out about the cash gift that he got. She asked her cousins and found out all of them got the same gift. She called us furious for discriminating against her. We told her that it was our money and after how she behaved, we did not want to give it to her. She started crying, said that she was just extremely stressed and that we shouldn't have taken it to heart. We told her that we stand by our decision, but now she is refusing to attend Christmas and her mother, our daughter-in-law, is calling us jerks. So are we no absolutely you're not as you said it is your money you can do with it as you like and ultimately you have done what you were asked to do in the first place right you know there's a registry for a reason there's a list you've got something on that list why is she so upset with you maybe she could be annoyed fine like you have a lot of money fair enough she knows this but because of her behavior being entitled being clearly very spoiled you've decided not to give her the money and that's completely your decision i mean the crazy thing is that she cared more about the cost of the gift that you got her than your presence at her wedding. That is that is a bit nuts, you have to admit, right? That's nothing to do with money or anything like that. That's just her trying to get as much money. That just goes against everything that you'd ever want in a person, right? That's got nothing to do with your family, your relationships, that sort of stuff. That's just like, if you're not gonna give me enough money, then you're not invited at all. Oh, and also she called you furious once she found out about the lack of 40K, trying to force you to give her more money again. She didn't even learn her lesson the first time. Maybe if she'd come up with an amazing apology, you might have given her the money, who knows? But the fact that she didn't learn her lesson proves that you were in the right in the first place. Am I the jerk for upstaging my wife in our Christmas cookie baking tradition? My wife and I have a tradition every Christmas where we bake Christmas cookies and frost them with our friends. We then give the cookies out to friends and family and helpers. Every year, my wife would take on the bulk of the baking duties, insisting that only she knew how to bake them right and only letting whoever is helping frost them. She always insisted on doing all the baking because frosting is the fun part and the only thing people want to do. Usually, this frosting and baking marathon would last until the wee hours of the morning and start around noon. Well, this year, for reasons that aren't relevant to this post today, she would not be available on the day we normally do all of this. She was sad that we wouldn't be able to do our cookie tradition. I said that I was more than capable of baking the cookies. She seemed to think that I was joking and that I could basically never do it myself. Well, I said I'd try and she wished me a sarcastic good luck. Well, in the run-up to the days of baking and frosting, I start running drills to optimize production. Enter testing and tragic mistake montage. I started rearranging the house in various configurations, running tests on the dough we were using to see how long it took to bake and making appropriate changes while running it by taste testers, substituting ingredients for quicker bake time while preserving taste, making the cookies as thin as possible without compromising frosting ratio, canvas space for creativity, and or compromising structural integrity, etc. So come the day of baking, I have everything down to a science. As friends and family come in, I give them the rundown. After a couple of hours, most kinks are worked out and cookies are flowing out at a breakneck pace. Eventually, we start running out of material, something that never happened under my wife's ages. We start making runs to the store for the necessary raw materials to fuel our mighty cookie forges. By the time we were done, we were exhausted around 2 a.m. We produced at least five times the amount of cookies that we ever had before. Well, my wife gets home a couple of days later and is weirdly upset. She insists the cookies taste weird, that we spent too much money, and that I was actively trying to make her look bad by making so much more than her. In truth, I ran blind tests to see if anyone could differentiate between our old recipe and mine, and nobody could. I also only spent 40% more than years previous as I slotted in some cheaper ingredients and bought some stuff in bulk, and I'd absolutely zero intention of upstaging her. I simply had the goal of maximizing cookie production. She says that even if I didn't do it on purpose, that I should have thought about how it made her look to our circles and that I've embarrassed her, and she actually called me a jerk. She's never called me that in all three years of marriage, so I can't help but think I am. So, am I in the wrong? And there we go, a little bit of a techie one to end with. I'm not entirely sure how I think about this. Just from reading your post, OP, and seeing how you sound, and, you know, trying to gauge the tone of your voice and how you feel about this entire thing through your words, I wouldn't say that you're the jerk. You sound like a nice guy, and you sound like you had good intentions. And ultimately, you did come out with a fantastic solution that yielded five times the amount that it did in the past, and everyone seemed to like it and have a good time. So, fair play for that. What I would say, though, is that your wife is upset for a reason, and I think it's a valid reason. It is her thing. And look, maybe given that she wasn't going to do it, it's nice of you to take over it. And she could have been a little bit more grateful. But I do understand in part why she feels slightly upstaged, especially if you've made so much more and, you know, people 
people are saying it's just as nice, I can understand why she'd feel a bit miffed about that. Like, it's a tough one because you didn't do anything wrong and the way you did it sounds fun and competitive, which probably was exciting for a lot of people. But in your wife's shoes, you wouldn't want to come home and discover that the thing that you do every single year has actually been improved or people have had more fun when you're not there. Like, that wouldn't be a nice surprise to come back to, would it? So I would say, look, you did nothing wrong, but maybe consider telling your wife how much you appreciate her doing it normally, how much you didn't like her being there, how, how, how much better it would have been if she was there with you and how much you were missed, and that ultimately you'd rather have her and fewer cookies than more cookies without her. Am I the jerk for making my parents choose between my sister going to jail or replacing my car with their vacation money? I am a 17 year old girl and I live with my parents I have an older sister who was 29 that they had when they were super young Like I think my mum was 19 and my dad was 18 They didn't do a great job with her and she has a lot of problems She's chronically unemployed and she's a thief She has two kids that are okay They live with us as well because her boyfriend didn't want them around I like the kids but they are spoiled little brats my parents dote on to make up for being trashy parents to their mum My parents won't let me put a lock on my door because it's their house and they don't want that. No problem. I talked to the kids and explained about what would happen if they came into my room without permission. We have an understanding. Well, my sister broke up with her boyfriend and she needed a place to stay. I begged my parents not to let her stay with us. They declined. So I begged again for a lock on my door. No dice. I have to go to school so I can't guard my stuff at all times. When I came home on Friday, I found my car absolutely trashed and the side of it destroyed. My sister had gone into my room, found my spare key and taken my car. Then lost control on the ice after a day of eating trash and tossing fast food wrappers everywhere. She sideswiped a tree. When I saw my car, I was livid. I told my parents that I expected her to pay to fix it. They said she didn't have any money. So I said that I would call my grandparents. They'd help me get the car and insurance. After talking with my grandfather, I came back to talk to my parents. I said that the insurance would cover fixing or replacing my car depending on the damage, but that I would have to file a police report and that my sister would probably be charged for stealing my car. They begged me to tell insurance that she had permission. I said, nope. So rather than go through insurance, they are replacing in my car but they're using money they'd set aside to take me and my nieces to orlando next summer for my graduation it's fine i can do without seeing disney world again but my parents sister and nieces are upset with me and saying that i'm the jerk for denying my nieces the opportunity to go on a vacation that they've never had i just asked them if a lock for my door would have been cheaper so am i the jerk Oh, and a quick edit here. Hey, I just got home from school. There is a deadbolt on my bedroom door and my mum gave me a key. She says that she's keeping the other one for emergency. I agreed as long as it was only for emergencies. Well, I think the fact that your parents have now installed a lock on your door shows that you were in the right the entire time and they now realize their mistake. It would have been so much easier had they just given you a lock in the first place and they now realize that. I mean, that comment at the end, I just asked them if a lock for my door would have been cheaper. So good. I mean, so petty. It's not petty revenge, but it might as well be. And yeah, look, it's a shame that they're not going to be able to go on a vacation and neither are you. But ultimately, your car has been destroyed and you need a car. And that is where the money should go. And that is where the money has rightfully gone. Am I the jerk for snapping at my friend who keeps ditching me because I now have a child? Just over two years ago, I, a 29-year-old woman, unexpectedly got pregnant and now have a beautiful 18-month-old daughter, Kira. Over that time, my friend's circle got considerably smaller, but my best friend remained, Mia. Mia doesn't have kids, nor want kids, but she's been brilliant with Kira. I'm a stay-at-home mum, and obviously don't have as much time to hang out as I did previously. Mia and I live on the same streets. We're in Manchester, England, and it's a walking distance between our houses. I've told Mia numerous times that she can just pop in whenever she wants. She works from home, but she rarely does. She did at the beginning, but it's been happening less and less. Instead, she keeps suggesting we go out for coffee or pizza or even a drink, but I don't have the time, and I always just tell her to come over and we'll have coffee at my place. She asked if I wanted to go out with her and her other friends for a drink last weekend now i said no but that she's welcome to come over and we'll have a few drinks at mine she said she already had plans and it felt weird to drink when she knows there's a child around honestly i feel neglected i feel like she put me on a back burner and doesn't want to be friends anymore i'm always available but she rarely comes over and i don't think that's fair today i saw her photos from saturday night and i was fuming She ditched me just so she could go and drink like she's 20 again. I felt rejected and horrible. I thought we were best friends, but she clearly doesn't value me when she won't even have a few drinks with me at my house. When she finished work, she called and asked if I fancied going for a coffee in town, but I asked her to come over again. She said yes, but before she disconnected, I heard her mumble like always. This really annoyed me. 
When she came over, I decided to be open about everything. And while not my proudest or most mature moments, I shouted at her that she's an awful friend, that she barely comes over, and if she doesn't want to spend time with me, to just say it and stop playing around. She said she's always been accommodating, but it's been two years and she doesn't want to spend time with me when there's always a kid, especially now when she has to watch her language. Mia likes to swear. I said that she knew I had a child and responsibilities. And she said that Tom, my partner, could take care of Kira once in a while so I could have time off. This felt really intrusive and I told her to mind her own business and not meddle on my marriage I was really angry with her and kicked her out. She called me a selfish jerk on her way out Normally i'd expect her to call by now with apologies, but she hasn't done so and i'm starting to wonder was I in the wrong or was she? Perhaps I was too harsh and should have been more careful with discussing it Yeah, tough one to be honest with you guys. I think that op is in the wrong here, right? I understand what she's saying She obviously has responsibilities and has a baby has a child and you can't go out and you know drink and you know Even maybe go and have coffee all the time pizza all the time. I understand that However, you have said yourself that you do have a partner there who can take care of your child and let you have time off I mean, that's a normal thing to do, right? And also it's not as if your friend has ditched you She keeps inviting you to do stuff. She has gone round to your house It seems like quite a lot of the time. I mean you said at the beginning she did go a lot It's happening less and less now and by that comment on the phone You can see that she doesn't just want to go to your house every Every single time you meet up she wants to go and have fun she wants to drink there's nothing wrong with acting like you're 20 by the way she doesn't have responsibilities at her age of 31 she's gonna go and do fun stuff that she wants to do and you can't control that i'll be upset with that she literally asked you to go out with her and her friends like she's made the plans and invited you along you said no You can't be angry at her photo. Sorry. She's just living her life. If anything, I'd say that you're the one that's not being a great friend here. She's putting in a lot more effort than you. The only effort that you'd have to put in would be to say to your partner, oh, I want to go out with my friend. Can you look after the baby? They say yes. Then you'd go. Really, is it that difficult? I don't think so. Am I the jerk for telling my husband I'd rather nobody use my holiday booking out of spite? My husband and I have been together for five years, married for three. We're both athletic people, or at least I used to be. So we've been planning a holiday for the past year. Without going into major details, it's an expensive, by my standards, holiday, and it would have involved a lot of hiking. I was looking forward to it. I was in an accident recently, and once again, without going into much detail as it's triggering, lost my leg. It's upsetting, but I'm not in a place to openly speak about it outside of therapy. Obviously, due to this recent restriction, I'm unable to do what we planned for our holiday. I hadn't thought about the holiday. It's non-refundable. I'd expected my husband to not want to go. Currently, his family haven't asked once how I am, and my family claim it's hard to be around me because they don't know how to support me. Whatever. He said yesterday that he's invited his sister in my place. I was baffled because I expected him to support me. He said it's not for two months. I'm like, so? Cancel and book something we can both do. He said he needs a break, that he's been supporting me, he deserves this, and he was also looking forward to it. So I said, you go, but I pay for my spot, so no, she can't use it. He asked if I'm being serious, that it's spiteful. His sister hasn't done anything. I said she hasn't asked me once so I'm doing. She texted me last week for £150. Why should she get a free holiday? Anyway, he's upset, claiming he'll still go and pay for his sister, which he won't, since A, it's expensive, and b last i checked it's fully booked so am i the jerk i'd ask family or friends but i don't feel like texting them i mean first things first just off the bat the first thing i need to mention is that if you have travel insurance you'll be able to get the money back you've lost your leg i don't know how it happened but i mean surely that is covered by insurance right i feel like that's the first thing to say secondly no you're not the jerk anyway it is your spot on the trip It is your money. Therefore, you can choose to do with that spot and that money and that trip what you want. And if you don't want anyone to go in your place, then that's absolutely fine. If I'm honest, the actions and words of both your husband's family, your husband and your family are kind of crazy. Like, that's the most upsetting thing here. Surely everyone should be saying, okay, let's cancel the entire trip because this is something that OP really wanted to do and they've lost their leg. Your family's saying it's hard to be around you and we don't know how to support you. That is just ridiculous. That's just not good family right there. Your husband's acting poorly as well, and his family's not even worth mentioning. The whole thing is just very, very poor all around. And ultimately, I'm very sorry that you lost your leg. Am I the jerk for refusing to pay child support to my ex-wife for our children so she and her husband can save for their other kids? My ex-wife and I are the parents of a daughter who is 17 and a son who is 15. We share custody of our kids 50-50, and we've been divorced for 13 years now. Neither of us pays child support because we have equal time with the kids and we split the cost 
of everything. School, medical, dental, extracurriculars. I opened up bank accounts for my kids when each was born and I've saved from the get-go. But around eight or so years ago, I came into some money because I was injured at work and I put that money into their accounts. As well as this, a relative died four years ago and I was left a sum of money that also went into the accounts for my children. The money I've now saved for them will help them tremendously in their futures, whether they go to college or not. My ex-wife remarried several years ago. Her stepdaughter is 16. She's got a nephew of her husband's they are raising who is 14 and she has a seven and five year old with her husband. My ex-wife wanted to talk to me about college for our kids and she told me that she and her husband had told all their kids that community college would be the most affordable option for them and that they would get as much help as possible but a more expensive school would be tough on them. I told her that our kids would have that option if they wanted it because I've saved a more than healthy amount for them. She asked me why I never told her sooner and I told her because I was taking care of our children and it wasn't something she needed to know about. A few days after this talk, she called me and alongside her husband said that they would like me to pay child support for our kids so that they can save more money for their other children's futures. I told her I wasn't going to pay her child support just so she could support the other children in her home. Her husband told me I could always offer to split the money between all of the children. I told him I wasn't paying for his kids to go to college. I told them I only had a responsibility to my children. I told them if they wanted to save more money, I would happily take the kids more if they, my kids, want to spend more time at home with me. My ex-wife called me cruel and said keeping 50-50 and paying money so our kids' siblings can go to college should be a no-brainer for me. I told her the day I have an obligation to help her support her entire household is a day in another universe where we never broke up. But we did, and she has to accept she's equally responsible for our kids as me. They both told me I was a butt, and even though I feel like I'm crazy for asking, I must ask. Am I the jerk? See, now this one is extremely simple. There is absolutely no way you're the jerk. They're just trying to manipulate you and coerce you into paying towards their kids' futures. You have no right slash need to do that. They're not your kids. And yeah, I kind of get what they're saying in terms of your kids have enough. Maybe they do. I, I don't know. But it's also your money and your children. So you're obviously going to put that money towards your children in a very sensible way, I may add. There's nothing wrong with that. And that definitely does not mean that you should give money to your ex-wife's children. Strange. Am I the jerk for asking my roommate to avoid cooking certain meals when my pregnant girlfriend visits? My girlfriend and I are expecting. We don't live together, but we're waiting till the baby's born to figure out our living arrangements. She is four months pregnant. There are certain smells that she just cannot tolerate, and my roommate tends to cook some meals with a smell that causes her to be nauseous. This results in her throwing up and getting sick. I tried to speak to him about it, but he got pretty defensive, saying he has a specific diet that he sticks to and that he didn't see how this was wrong. I cleared things up, saying there was nothing wrong with what he was doing, but I just asked him to not cook those specific meals that have a smell that trigger my girlfriend's nausea. He got upset and ranted about how he's a resident, unlike my girlfriend, who doesn't live here, and said that he can't even consider my request since she's here almost four days a week and stays until 10pm. I tried to discuss it with him and maybe figure out a compromise, but he bluntly told me he doesn't owe me or my girlfriend any accommodations nor compromises. I thought that was unnecessarily rude and selfish of him. He told me to deal with it or tell her not to come, which was offensive because she's my partner and she's pregnant and I need to make sure she's okay by seeing her weekly. He's avoiding me right now. So am I the jerk? I figured it wouldn't be such a huge deal since it wasn't like I'm telling him to stop cooking at all just when my girlfriend is over. For some information as well, I can't go to her place because she's currently living with her parents and I can't go over there because I'm not on good terms with them. Oof, a little bit of a tech cool one here now a few issues with this one because off the rip i would honestly say that asking somebody to be a little bit conscientious about what they're cooking when their pregnant girlfriend is over because it makes her actually throw up is a fair shout the thing that i don't really agree with your roommate on op is when they're saying that they shouldn't have to make any accommodations nor compromises to you or your girlfriend i don't agree with that because you're roommates you have to live with each other and therefore you're gonna have to compromise on certain things now that is kind of the end of me agreeing with op because after that yeah, I'm not going to lie. I think you might be the jerk. First of all, you're saying that she comes around four days a week and stays until 10 o'clock. What is he supposed to do in that time? Like the guy's got to eat and you can't ask him to cook different meals all the time. Four days a week is the majority of the week. He can't change his menus and recipes for the majority of the time in his own home just because you're a girlfriend. That is too far. Also, you can't go to her place because she's currently living with her parents and you're not on good terms with them. That's on you. That's not your roommates. Like your roommate shouldn't have to put up with that just because you fell out with your girlfriend's parents. That's not on him to change all his recipes and meals just because you can't go to your girlfriend's place. I think the main thing is that your roommate is right. He didn't choose to live with a pregnant woman. Like that wasn't part of the deal. And yeah, look, I'm sure that he would be willing to sacrifice 
sacrifice maybe one or two meals a week, but four days a week changing everything for himself, that was never the plan. And that's unfair to put that, that burden on him. Am I the jerk for telling my friend to man up or not come to my wedding? For some context, me and Taylor have been best friends since forever. We were school buddies, college friends. My parents love him. We vacationed together many times. Taylor is a very affectionate person, a kind, thoughtful guy. Three years ago, me and Anne started dating, and now I'm pretty sure she's the love of my life. Brilliant women all around, we're getting married next January. The conflict. After a long and thoughtful conversation, my fiance voiced her concerns about inviting Taylor to our wedding. Basically, she had two main reasons for asking him that. One, dress code. Taylor is a 30 year old punk. He wore a dress to our prom. You know, that kind of guy. Two, Taylor is dating a guy, which is not the problem, but his partner is also very flamboyant. Anne wants a very minimalist, quiet, calm wedding because she struggles with anxiety and ADHD. So that was her request. I talked to Taylor the next day and I told him about Anne's concerns. Tay said, do you think I'm going to show up in a white dress and laugh about it? But I told him he needed to promise he would respect the dress code. Black tuxedo for the guys, that was the code. I got a little caught in the moment, so maybe I was harsher than I should have been. I told him to man up and to act his age. I said some stupid stuff like, people laugh about you, you want to be a joke? He said, sure, no problem. And the next day, he declined the online invitation. He keeps telling me we're good and everything is okay, but the situation is bothering me. I love Tay, but I know he can be difficult. My group chat of my family is burning because they don't understand why he won't be there, and our friend's group chat is dead since the news dropped. Am I the jerk? Yeah, OP, not gonna lie, I think you might be the jerk here. You've said to one of your best mates, man up, and also, if you dress how you normally dress, people are gonna laugh at you when that's just the way he is. That is tough. Okay, I'm looking at this now. You want to be a joke, is what you said to him. Wow, this could have been so easily avoided if you just said to him, look, by the way, I know how you like to dress and I would never want to, you know, restrict you. However, on this one certain occasion, due to the disorders that my girlfriend has, it is extremely important that you fully respect the dress code. And he would have clearly said, yes, that's fine. I will do that. That could have been it. It could have been as simple as that. But no, you went down the people laugh about you route. That is personal. Am I the jerk for selling my house since my roommates thought I was ripping them off? I own, have a massive mortgage on, a house in a high cost of living city. I have four roommates. I have the basement suites and the upstairs is rented to one couple and two single people. They know I own the house and all of them were recommended to me by friends or family. I still required a lease agreement and security deposit as well as first and last month's rents. I was just willing to rent to them at below market rate because I didn't have to advertise or arrange for a property manager. Between the four of them, I collect enough to cover the mortgage and utilities with a little left over. I save my money and use it to pay for major repairs and maintenance. Well, I'll be starting a new job in a different city in the new year. I knew about this back in late October. I offered the couple an opportunity to take over the basement suite in the new year for a little bit more money. They would get a massive bedroom upgrade and a private living room, bathroom and kitchen. They agreed and let me know that they were planning on moving out in one year so they'd be willing to sign a one year lease. I asked the two singles if either of them wanted to take the master bedroom that would be empty. They both declined but asked if they could turn it into a home office for them. I said sure but they would have to cover the rent for the room. Now they think I'm being unreasonable since I'll be making more money off the couple they think I should keep their rent the same and let them have the room for free. I offered it to them for 80% of what I was getting before but they called me a selfish jerk for taking all their money. Even if they took the deal that they would still be paying less than market value for a single room in our city. It turned into a huge fight with the people who referred them to me calling me a greedy jerk for trying to suck money out of their friends. I don't need to deal with any of this. I found a property investor who was willing to buy my house and honor my current leases, including the new one for the couple. Unfortunately for the other two renters, their leases are up in February and I imagine the rents would be going up a fair bit. But that isn't my problem anymore. So now everyone they know are angry with me because these two people will most likely have to move into a worse living situation. I feel bad because if I wasn't moving, I would stay and deal with it, but it is just easier to walk away. And there we go, ending with someone who definitely is in the right. The fact that you're giving them a good deal in the first place and they don't really understand that. So then when you give them a normal deal or even a slightly better than normal deal, they think it's a bad deal, you're kind of just getting punished there for you being nice in the first place. That's not how it should work. And also, why are other people getting involved in your rent and stuff? Like, it's between you and your tenants, right? I don't know where everyone's going, oh, you're such a disgrace. You're charging less than the standard rate for a room. You're still a disgrace. Makes no sense. Also, the fact that you're saying that if you weren't moving out, you would stay and deal with it yourself. And the fact that you have been doing that for a long period of time at a cheaper price for everyone else shows that you're a nice person and you're a fantastic landlord. But you not being there means that you have to employ someone or pay someone to look after the property. How are you going to get that money? The rent has to go up. 
And the fact that it's underneath the market value anyway means you have that license, you have that space to do it, and they really can't complain. Am I the jerk for taking my niece to court over a coat? I am a 28-year-old woman, and I have a 16-year-old niece. She is my only sister's only child. Two years ago, I married a very wealthy man, and because of the pandemic, last Christmas was my first with my in-laws. My mother-in-law gifted me a coat that is worth more than $20,000. I saw her wearing it, asked her where she bought it, and she said that it will be my Christmas gift from her. What a Christmas gift. I didn't know how much it was. I knew it was expensive, but I thought maybe 3000 at the most. I was visiting my sister last January when my niece saw it. She Googled the brand and showed me how much it really was. I won't lie, I didn't wear it after that because I was afraid of ruining it. Last week, I wore it while visiting my sister. While I was putting it back on to leave, I felt something go splat on my back. Then my niece started cackling and the smell of paint hit me. I was so angry. While she was not apologetic at all. Her mum screamed at her and said she was grounded. Then she said she will pay for the dry cleaning. While I was in my car, still in shock by the way, I got an alert that my niece posted a reel. It was of her doing a prank on me. And she said, I'm going to hit my aunt's $20,000 coat with a paint-filled balloon to see how she reacts. I saved it on my phone, sent it to her mum, and told her that a week's grounding is not enough. She didn't reply, but I saw that my niece took it down. It got less than five views by then. The next day, I found out my coat cannot be saved. So I called my sister and told her that her daughter has to pay it back. Well, we got into an argument and she said that they will not be paying it. And if I wanted a new one, I should get my husband to buy one for me. I think that they should pay for it. They can afford to. IMO, they should sell my niece's car and pay me back my money. We did not reach an agreement. So I told her that I will be suing and reminded her that I have video evidence that her daughter, A, did it on purpose for online clouts and b knew exactly how expensive it was people in my life are not objective at all i have some calling me a jerk some saying they are the jerks for not buying me a new one and some so obsessed with the price of the coat that they're calling me a jerk for simply owning it and wanting a new one so am i in the wrong Wow, where to even begin with this post? That was simply sensational. First of all, I have to say, pranks like this, I don't know where they've come from or why people are doing them these days, but I don't understand how anyone could ever find that funny. Like, it's just baffling to me. Even if I'm in my darkest humor sense of mind, I still don't really get the joke. Like, it's just ruining something for the sake of ruining it. Where's the fun in that? Like, I thought pranks should be funny. I don't know about you lot, but I just don't get it. So, punishing her daughter, no doubt that's a given. The problem is, should she have to pay back the full value? At just 16 years old, obviously she doesn't have a free 20,000 lying around. And is it really fair to put that sort of money on her mum when it wasn't her that did it? Like, I don't know, it's pretty easy to say she damaged a $20,000 piece of property, therefore she owes $20,000. But I just don't think it's as simple as that. For me, I reckon there should be some sort of middle ground. Look, ideally she'd have the money and pay back the 20 Okay, I'm not saying that, but she's 16. She just doesn't have that. So what do you reckon? Find a middle ground or the full 20K? Let me know in the comments down below. That was a techie one to start with. Am I the jerk for how I fought my boyfriend's medical bill? Going too far. My boyfriend had to go to the ER after an accident and he got a truly ridiculous bill back. I offered to fight the bill for him because I've done it before and he said, sure. I went all out because honestly, if we were out five grand after insurance, that would screw up our holiday plans pretty bad. So I had him call the hospital and authorize me to handle his bill and access of medical records. Got an itemized bill and compared the prices for each code to the fair prices. Called billing to dispute the bill but was told that billing only collects bills i'd need to contact admin to dispute bounced around a call center for hours trying to get someone who was actually qualified for bill disputes getting nowhere google and linkedin search for the hospital board of directors and upper management got 30 emails of the most influential people at the hospital plus the hospital's investors every day i'd send a few emails working my way up the chain and writing an increasingly long email describing how they billed my client at seven times over the fair price for services rendered and how their billing department, customer service department, and the growing list of management I'd emailed had failed to address the issue. And finally, escalated the emails until I was writing the director level staff with the entire board of directors and a number of outside investors CC'd, asking for a written statement regarding their justification for billing at a rate seven times higher than the national average, for commensurate services to what is available at other hospitals, and sternly laying out the failures to appropriately respond at every level of the company. Well, once I'd done all that, which was honestly only like 15 minutes a day, they reduced the bill from $5,000 to 26. Yep, 
26 freaking dollars. Well, I told my boyfriend the good news and he was at first overjoyed and blown away, like literally jumping up and down and hugging me and saying I was literally a Christmas miracle. But then when he asked how I did it, I said it wasn't too hard. I just had to send a couple of emails each day. He was curious what I said and I handed him my phone. He started to get stressed and flip back through other emails, which there were like 60 of. He told me I went way too far. He was expecting me to dispute through their billing department or something normal and reasonable like that, not internet stalk every single manager and board member and investor and harass them into dropping the bill. I was frustrated because I just saved us five grand, actually made it possible for us to afford a nice Christmas and save some money. And he was mad at me because I'd been a bit of a hard ass. I was furious and he was also mad at me saying he authorized me to dispute a bill, not basically threaten and harass a whole dang hospital for weeks. So the question is, am I the jerk for how I got my boyfriend's medical bills dropped? Honestly, I'm really failing to see the issue that your boyfriend has here by legal means you've saved yourself five thousand dollars well four thousand nine hundred and what is it seventy four to be precise but still that's a lot of money i would understand if he was annoyed if you'd done it in illegal means or you'd gone way too far immorally but this is completely fine if anything he should be celebrating how much effort and work you put in to save your guys so much money and ultimately save christmas What is wrong with him? All that to say, no, you're obviously not the jerk. Let's carry on. Am I the jerk for banishing my teenage daughter's friend from our house because she made fun of my weight? I have two kids with my husband, a 14 year old daughter and a 10 year old son. Our daughter has always been a little socially awkward to the point that we've had her tested since we suspected her of being on the spectrum. Turns out she isn't on the spectrum. She's just a natural introvert. However, this year in school, we were thrilled when our daughter made a new friend her age since that is an area in which she struggles. Long story short, she recently invited her new friend over with our approval to have dinner at our house and then spend the night so my daughter's friend came over my husband is usually the cook in the family and this night was no exception he made us all a really nice meal during the course of said meal i asked my daughter's friend are you enjoying the food she responded yes your husband is a great cook No wonder you've ended up a bigger woman. The room got quiet for several moments. My husband tried to laugh it off and change the subject, but I wasn't having it. The girl had just leveled a completely uncalled for insult at me. My daughter's friend seemed to realize that she'd messed up, but she didn't say anything else. We finished an awkward dinner in mostly silence, and my daughter's friend did stay the night. This was a couple of months ago. Recently, my daughter asked if she could have that friend back over, and I told her, sure, if she's going to apologize to me. When our daughter asked what I meant, I reminded her of what she'd said. My daughter responded that it was over and she didn't want to bring it up again. She then went to her father and asked. He said sure, but she then told him what I'd said. He came to me and said, look, her friend just felt awkward and tried to make a joke. It didn't land. For the sake of our daughter, can't you just let it go? Now, yes, I could. But the thing is, I just want an apology from the girl. I need to see that she understands how rude she was before I can get on board with her and my daughter hanging out. My husband says that I'm being weird for insisting on an apology from a 14 year old, especially since that girl is such a good friend of our daughter. But I think it's weird that I'm still waiting for an apology from that same girl. Seriously, that's all I need. I just need to know that any friend of my daughter is willing to own up to her screw ups. All right, my answer is kind of twofold here. On the one hand, I understand why you'd be annoyed at this comment. It's completely fair. Someone kind of making a joke about your way. I get it. It's not ideal. However, then for you to hold a grudge on a 14 year old girl for a number of months, that is a bit psycho. Get over it and get over yourself. Your husband's right. It was a joke that didn't land. That's it. Come on. If you're going to get that annoyed over one joke at your expense that didn't land, then what's the point of even being here? You know, like, come on. It's not that deep relax. And then you get to the point where you're limiting your daughter from a friend that she's genuinely made, even though you know how hard it is for her to make friends. That is too far. Like at that point, you're putting your own pettiness above your daughter's friendship. I'm not sure I can get on board with that. Am I the jerk for leaving a fake positive pregnancy test in the bedroom to catch my husband's mum snooping? My mother-in-law moved in with us a month ago. I began to notice my stuff in the bedroom being touched, furniture rearranged, stuff moved, etc. I felt like I was going crazy because my husband is the only one who has access to the bedroom and he doesn't usually touch nor come near my things. I figured it must be his mum walking in and snooping on my personal stuff. I told my husband and he said his mum would never. I had a huge hunch but couldn't install a cam in the bedroom to catch her in the act. So I got me one of those fake positive pregnancy tests and threw it in the bedroom's trash can. Note, the trash can was placed in the corner near the closet. Literally the next day after I got to work, I got tons of calls and texts from my in-laws congratulating me for my pregnancy. My husband came over to my workplace and was all worked up about it, asking since when was I pregnant and why didn't I tell him? I asked how he found out 
out and he said his mum found the positive test in the trash can in the bedroom I asked if his answer just confirmed that she'd been snooping in the bedroom all along He had a realization moment but demanded we stick to the bigger issue I said there was no bigger issue because the positive test was fake and this whole thing was done to expose my mother-in-law snooping He wasn't convinced. He had me take an actual test right in front of him and he was livid asking how could I lie about such a thing and break his mum's heart since I know very well that she longs for kids. I got a lot of stick because of this from him, his mum and family now calling me a liar and a manipulator. So am I the jerk? Now look, you could argue it's a little bit unfortunate that you went this far and play with people's emotions this much. I mean, I feel for your husband, right? On the one hand, he goes from thinking that all of a sudden he's going to be a dad then to have that ripped away that's obviously not the nicest thing however you did get your point across right you clearly caught your mum snooping and ultimately given that nobody believed you especially not your husband you had to make that happen i do wonder if there was a way though that you could have gone through with this without your husband getting hurt so much did it have to be a fake pregnancy test yes it worked fantastically and you got your point across fair enough but I do feel bad for your husband nonetheless. I mean, then again, you could argue that he should have just listened to you in the first place and sided with you over his mum, or at least understood where you were coming from. I don't know, maybe he deserved it. Let me know in the comments. Am I the jerk for telling my wife the cat is still her responsibility, even if she's pregnant? My wife and I are expecting our first baby. Three years ago, my wife decided she desperately wanted a cat. Now, I hate cats and all animals in the house, really, so I was against it. But she wouldn't stop talking about it. So finally, we made a deal that she could get a cat, but it was her responsibility. I'd have nothing to do with it, and she agreed. She stuck to her word, and I stuck to mine. I mostly ignore the cat. Now she's pregnant and asked me if I can scoot the litter until she gives birth because of toxoplasmosis. But I looked it up, and as long as she wears gloves and washes her hands, she should be good. So I told her absolutely not She wasn't happy, but I reminded her of our agreement when we got the cat I told her it was her responsibility and if she didn't want to take care of it anymore with the new baby coming We can get rid of it and find it a new home She said no and has been scooping the litter Her sister was over and saw her doing this and flipped out at me telling me how dangerous it is But of course her sister is going to be on her side and overreact I never wanted the cat, so I don't see how I'm wrong. I mean, in my opinion, it doesn't even matter about toxoplasmosis. It doesn't matter if it's the most dangerous thing in the world. The fact of the matter is, you're just being a jerk because you're not helping your pregnant wife. Simple as that. I don't care what agreements you've got. It's not that hard to help your pregnant wife for a couple of months before she gives birth to your baby to scoop up some cat litter. Come on. And also, you just know that roles reverse, this sort of thing does happen in your house. I don't know what it could be with. Could be the washing, could be the cooking, could be anything. Cleaning, I don't know. Could be anything. I guarantee that there are some things that you don't do that your wife does for you that she doesn't like doing. Yet you, because you have this one principle that happened a long time ago, you can't be bothered or we can't help your wife in this one situation. You're a disgrace, my friend. Am I the jerk for calling my husband unreasonable for cancelling the holiday trip just because me and the kids couldn't help him in an emergency? My husband and I have been together for four years i have two kids a 17 year old boy and a 19 year old girl and their half brother is three years old this past week my husband had an emergency dad had a medical emergency and wanted someone to watch our son he asked my older son and he refused because he was going out with friends he also asked my daughter but she locked herself in her room to study i was at the restaurant with my brother meeting his girlfriend for the first time my husband ended up taking our son with him to the hospital and his mum watched him from there he came home and was lashing out at everybody calling us selfish and unfeeling i tried to explain that the kids were busy but he told me to get the f out with that bull because my older son could have skipped the hangout and watched his brother And my daughter could have watched her brother while studying instead of locking herself in her room He scolded me as well But I told him I couldn't leave lunch with my brother since he was visiting town and this was my only chance to meet his girlfriend He yelled some more then told us that he was cancelling the family holiday trip for christmas this year The two older kids were upset and said it was unfair I called him unreasonable to cancel the trip and punish the kids and possibly me like that He refused to discuss it later now me and the kids aren't speaking to him and he's saying good riddance No, your husband is absolutely in the right If you guys can't prioritize him and his dad when his dad's having a medical emergency for literally no reasons By the way, like what are you even doing? Meeting your brother's girlfriend, I don't care. Studying in your room, who cares? Hanging out with mates, what? Do that literally any other time? Then no, you don't deserve to go on this family trip. I'm sorry, you just don't. Like honestly, at least have a good excuse. Your husband's dad is in a medical emergency and you're going to lunch. What? Are you mad? I mean, to be fair, I think we should probably just retitle the post. Instead of what it is, it should be, my husband canceled our trip because me and my children are all very unreasonable simple as that am i the jerk for calling out my step family's dirty laundry at thanksgiving after they criticized me for being unmarried 
I'm still getting trash for this from my family So it's possible I may be a bit of a jerk here I am a 29 year old woman. The players are my mum, stepdad and four step siblings and their families I'm the black sheep and that i'm the only one not married with kids, but that's by my preference I love living alone I don't want kids and having a partner just isn't that important to me My family has been asking me when i'm going to get a boyfriend and settle down since I was 19 And the answer has always been ooh, never I was gonna skip thanksgiving but my mum insisted that she wanted everyone home this year if possible so i went it was the usual drill but my youngest stepbrother and his wife are having another kid so that was the big announcement this was fine until around the end of dinner one of my stepsisters in law asked if i'm not anxious to have kids since i'm almost 30 and time is running out i laughed and said nah i'm good that led to one of the stepbrothers saying that every family needs an old maiden aunt and some other comments i didn't appreciate I said let's move on but my mum said we're just worried about you now this is where i'm possibly in the wrong i know all the family dirt so i said well i'm the only person at this table that's not an alcoholic a cheater or constantly broke as frick because i have more kids than i can afford so i'm not the one to worry about and that's how i brought thanksgiving to a dead halt and no one said a thing for the rest of dinner but my texts are radioactive still i feel like it was probably right in the line and my mum says this has caused a lot of problems among the siblings but also they kind of started it and there we go another classic example of you're more than willing to give it but you can't take it and to be honest that's on you if you're gonna say to someone you need to be worried are you not anxious your life's going nowhere etc etc you need to get a move on then when someone says stuff back to you about how they feel about your life that is negative you gotta take it simple as that and if you can't take it then yeah you're the jerk you know that meme f around and find out that's what they did and they didn't like it and that's on them am i the jerk for grounding my 16 year old son for a month after he called his stepdad a slur i'm a 43 year old man and my son is 16 I'm divorced. I have been for a few years now and my ex remarried recently. Her new husband, Jonathan, is black. We're white. He and my ex are now expecting a baby together. He also has two teenage boys himself. My ex and I share custody, but our son spends most of his time at my place because he has more room and privacy here. Last weekend, he was at his mum's and on Sunday, he called me all upset saying to come and pick him up. I rushed over there and found out that he got into a fight with Jonathan over some chores and Jonathan locked him out of Wi-Fi and banned him from video games until he does his chores which is how my ex and I also discipline him. And Jonathan has our permission to do the same if my son acts out. He can use the same methods he uses with his sons. More long-term slash serious punishments are of course decided between my ex and I, but no video games today type of thing is totally fine for Jonathan to do. My ex and Jonathan then told me that my son got all upset over this punishment and told Jonathan to F off. Jonathan then told him to stop talking like that, to which my son replied, you and your sons ruin my life, so you don't get to tell me what to do. I won't take orders from an N anyway. I asked my son if this is all true. He said, yes. He actually called him the N word because, well, isn't it true? I lost it and told my son he's grounded for the whole month of December. My ex agreed. He's obviously annoyed and angry because he had tons of plans with his friends. He said that I'm overreacting to one word and I'm being unfair. My brother and mum agree with my son and is saying that the punishment doesn't fit the crime. So, am I the jerk? Yeah, obviously not. Your son's just been racist. That's literally illegal. I don't think he realizes at this stage how serious that is. Because if you weren't his dad, you were just some stranger that happened to see us in the street, you could literally report this and your son could literally have charges put against him. You can't do this. It's literally illegal. So the fact that you've only given him a month, let's be honest, is actually quite lenient. I have no idea what your mum's going on about. I mean, maybe it's because she's from the older generation. I don't know. And maybe that's a little bit of a crazy thing to say. But the fact that she's saying that's too harsh when you've literally called someone the n-word uh yeah no you're just wrong and there we go guys that is going to do it for three hours of the very best am i the jerk stories of the past few months really hope you enjoyed this one if you did and you want even more from r slash am i the jerk i've left another movie length episode on screen and also linked in the description down below if you're new to the channel subscribe follow like comment whatever it is and i'll see you guys tomorrow with the next one